This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello everybody and welcome to the Super J Cast. I'm Joel Abraham, joined by David McDonald. Having a little chat about the old gridiron, the American football off the air, weren't we, Damon? Are you happy that is back? I am. Uh, we were, and I am. And uh, yeah, I am, because I like the autumn months. I know uh, that our uh, British listeners do not like me saying fall, but um, sorry. Yes, uh, the autumn months. And it's just kind of the kick off of that. And it's for me, I can't, I can't watch baseball, Joel. It just fucking it bores me to death. Um, so it's kind of like the launch of the real sports. It means hockey's right around the corner. Uh, all the good things in life seem to happen around this time of year. So I'm happy and yeah, it was good to be back. Uh, first game of the year to cover. Talked a lot of football with a lot of insiders, like I do. Um, and actually, I talked to um, I talked to a couple of reporters about our situation, Joel. As a matter of fact. Um, oh yeah, just, our I situation because we uh, were we were mean, we were unkind, weren't we? Well, I mean, according to uh, some feedback that we got, and uh, I got no problem addressing that. That's no problem. Um, but yeah, I actually addressed that specific situation um, with uh, well-respected beat writers who cover a National League football team, National Football League team, should I say? Uh, and I want to get their feedback, and uh, I could share that as well maybe later on in the show. How about that? Would well, you want to do it now? I could do it now. Absolutely. Um, how would you like to set this up, Joel? <laughs> so we got, we got a piece of feedback, and not necessarily wrong, saying that – what was the example given? If we were to bump into our friend of the show, Michael Craven, at a party, then – he would be well within his rights to say, hey, you, you said a lot of uh, unkind stuff about me. What's what's going on? And he would have the right to take umbrage with what we said. Was that the gist of it? Yeah. Uh, and a little bit more of, you know, you know, if if, if you had those those comments directed at you, you would probably feel a little sore as well. And uh, the fact that we didn't take that into consideration on maybe our past two shows in, in regards to that. And I would say this in in response. While I do understand that point of view, right? I absolutely do. I don't know if I necessarily agree with the example that was given. And what do you have the tweet in front of you, Joel? Maybe you can can read that because I think it's important to understand the context uh, of of okay of the tweet that was that was. And the response, and again, and this is not a, a a let's let's grab this person by the back of the the collar and 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 uh, boot stomp them. It's it's. Well, I thought respond. they made some some good points. Yes, I absolutely to do too. I, I tell you, actually, I would say this: we criticized Bad Luck Farley a lot, but when we met him at a party, which literally happened, he mm. didn't seem to mind, did he? <laughs> no, he probably had a couple of drinks in him too, but uh, no. And, and luckily, we no got idea a... who he was. Probably never listened to a minute of no. the show. But no. there you <laughs> That's go. Too. Uh, uh, okay, should I, should I just read out the messages then? Yeah, please, please. Okay, uh, I'm really not normally negative about free content for us fans, but I found your take of the Craven story to be a really bad angle on what went down. Literally three days early, you were reporting info that said he was leaving. I didn't say he was leaving. I said that he was demoted and in the comments publicly said he had done a very bad job and that he was a negative personality again this is just strictly what we've been told uh, how do you think someone is really going to feel if they re read that there are two sides to every story and for me i didn't really appreciate that lack of empathy if you meet someone at a party who you know has been basically saying they think you're bad and your attitude is negative yeah i think almost all of us will be pretty pensive at that point he's a human being and it felt that was forgotten in the pod i agree and i would agree because I will say this, if I'm being truthful, when we get negative, you know, stuff, you know, we suck, we blah, 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 you know, and we get, we, we get our share of it, trust me. Uh, 
I mean, let's put it this way. Joel's at the point where he doesn't even send me shit, right? Because he knows I'll just be like, ah, rah, rah, rah. Yeah, I'm <laughs> actively <laughs> hiding it from you, David. <laughs> I'm sure. I, 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 I don't doubt it. I absolutely don't doubt it. Um, so I, I 100% get that. So, okay, fair enough. But I will say this. When you, this is not a person where you're at a college party and you've been running your mouth about somebody, uh, and you finally catch up with them at the party, and there's a confrontation. I don't think that's what this is. This is the f- the the information and feedback that we've gotten um, about a a high ranking position in the company that we follow. I think that is newsworthy. And again, I I don't consider us a news source per se. I really don't. And, and and I don't think and and Joel is in agreement. I don't think we want to be news breakers. And but if there's something that that we feel is important to our listeners, we'll we'll report it. And I think a lot of what what we wrote or not wrote, but what we said, um, was newsworthy. Everything that we said was verified by multiple people, right? Uh, everything that we that 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 was it, information was given to us wasn't just one person spouting off um and i think the issue with a person not being a a person who who gets along well with everyone in the office is an important factor in that right uh and i'll share with you a quick story and being that we're on the football r- world uh, Philadelphia Eagles had a head coach by the name of Chip Kelly, and Chip Kelly was brought in to to take this team, this Philadelphia Eagle team, to the next level. And he lasted all of two two and a half years, maybe, uh, of being the savior of football. To whew, out the door you go, and one of the main factors, aside from wacky offensive schemes. Uh, poor player management. He didn't get along with players. Not only that, but he was not well liked at all by staff and other uh, office personnel within the Philadelphia Eagles. And that was a big story. Um, the dynamic is different. We are not friends at a party. Um, two, the the idea of a person not being able to work well with others is an important part of the story. Part three, you know, we he is in a a a high ranking or was at least a high ranking official within New Japan Pro Wrestling, and. It, again, this is not just some guy off the street. He chose to react the way that he reacted. Now, I spoke, I sit in the Eagles press box. I'm there. I've been covering this team for 20 years. So I've been able to afford some relationships with people who cover the team every single day, right? And I sit next to, in the press box, a gentleman by the name of Jeff Mosher. And Jeff has been covering the Eagles for legitimate news sources for years, for years. And I point blank asked him about, hey, have you written, I'm sure you've written stories that where players may not have agreed or management or coaches or how is that, how do you handle that? And he laughed. He was like, yeah, of course I have, right? And I kind of shared with him this story. Again, he doesn't know much about New Japan Pro Wrestling. He doesn't know much about pro wrestling in general. But what I tried to share with him was the the, the meat of this situation. And and this person's con- concerns who tweeted us. A lot of times, it's he said it's handled on a case-by-case basis. But by and large, it is a situation where the player or the person who has a problem with what was written will directly contact them, whether it's by phone, whether it's in person in, in, after a practice, whether it's whatever. But usually it's a face-to-face. And he said, you know, 
If I feel that I'm factually correct, I will stand my ground on certain cases, but I want to hear their side of the story. Absolutely, I do. But I will share with them why I feel I am this, this story is accurate. He said, um, I said, were there times where you think that maybe your opinion or maybe you were a little harsh in maybe the wording that you chose to use? And he said, yeah. He said, there, there, there have absolutely been cases of that where uh, hyperbole might have been uh, pushed a little hard. And he said, you know, I've apologized, you know, for when I felt like that was the case. And in hindsight, I may have been that way. He's, he has to, to, to players, professional football players. He said, and again, he's getting bits and pieces from me, mind you, but he was kind of like in agreement of how we handled the story was, was to the best of our ability. And the best of our ability is, once again, if there is an issue with anything that we have said, by all means, we are open to the conversation. We want that dialogue. We encourage that dialogue. I, you know, and I, and I speak for Joel in this, and only because I know he feels the same way. We, we want that, right? That is there. And I, and I will say that I would stand behind each and everything that we have said in the previous two weeks. Each and everything. Now, do we do a show? Do we try to make it entertaining? Do, can we get a laugh out of a situation and go for the joke? Yeah, we do. And if that makes us wrong, then, okay, we're not the New York fucking Times. Sorry. But that's, that's, that's we do a show, right? We're going to make it entertaining as much as possible instead of just reading off fucking bullet points. Uh, in closing, we're right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, and certain people who shall remain nameless really enjoyed it and said we were spot on. So, oh my God, Joel, there's something to be said. Were for you that su- as well. Yeah, were you surprised at the amount of people that you know the thumbs unsolicited. up emoji? unsolicited, unsolicited, yep, text so- messages, Twitter yep. DMs, just sliding in there saying, "Great job, I love that." Yep, yep, thumbs up, spot on, 100 percent accurate. Um, laughed my ass off, right? Um, that that you know, from from people that we we respect. So you know, look, I'll, I'll take that over. Uh, I broke a broke an egg. I broke a feeling. You know, um, can can I understand why a guy would do that? On the surface, yes. But again, you, you know, you choose to handle a situation how you choose to handle a situation. Um, you know. Being a a general manager, maybe one of several, who knows, uh, for for your international division, I would hope that there would be, mm, I don't know, again, open for dialogue. Treat it like you would any other professional sport um, that has been treated in the past. So, yeah, um, I mean, I hope we addressed it. I hope you will continue to listen. I hope we addressed it in a in a in a dignified manner but that's really how i feel about it yeah i agree i think we've dealt with that very uh in a balanced and even-handed <laughs> way yeah because yeah. usually we do if people criticize us we're like ah oh, fuck off and <laughs> block them but uh, we haven't right. done that so we're growing you know we're growing we are growing um and again i think that that i, I we, uh, listen you more than me welcome discourse and the challenging of opinions and and all that and you seem to handle that much better than me but uh i think uh, listen if everyone can grow from this i think that's a good thing that doesn't mean the dick joke stop <laughs> but it's it does mean that me again uh, we we'll make know. them but then we feel bad about them afterwards we'll feel, yeah. <laughs> right, right. We'll feel, we'll, and here's the thing joe too correct me if i'm wrong correct me if i'm wrong we held back stuff. You know what I mean? Like, there's plenty of stuff. Arguably the best bits, which right. we probably could have we, we thrown out there, but we didn't because... Right. Because well, we, we... they were unkind. Right. <laughs> we, just, we thought they were piling in and unnecessary to... I mean, the tone of the piece still stood, but right. there were certain bits which 
we all got a good laugh out of it, which we thought, nah, you know what, let's not put that in because it's unnecessarily cruel. Right, right. It's, just, it's like we self-edited. You all got the the watered-down versions. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sorry, watered down, but you know what I mean. Like, we, there are some juicy bits that are left on the cutting room floor, uh, because we, you know, collectively said, uh, "Yeah, I don't. Uh, what do you, what do you think? What do you think on this?" Right? Stop! So, stop! He's already dead. <laughs> right. Right. So, look, you know, I think, uh, look, I, I, I'm, I will 100% go to my grave being comfortable with this situation, even with. The door being open to further communication, which I'm sure won't happen. We're serious journalists here at the Super J Cost. Yeah, so all, all what the discussion has been this week about wrestling journalists. Hey, you know, I once I did a, uh, a newspaper journalism qualification. I've got a newspaper journalism NCTJ. I did that when I came out of university. So I can write shorthand uh, 100 words per minute. Bet you never oh. knew that. I did not know that. I, I can't do that. I certainly. That's why I'm in radio because I can't type, and I'm ugly. Well, I, 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 I um, decided not to go into journalism because it was just too difficult to find regular paid work, especially in London where everything's just unpaid internships. And I was like, yeah. you know, I can't can't do that forever, can you? I tried to do it for a bit to bulk, bulk up the CV, but at the end of the day, you got bills to pay. And but uh, yeah, I, I would say both of us we are not coming from a position of complete ignorance when it comes to journalism. You are certainly, you, I mean, you're the expert here, but I've got this piece of paper that says <laughs> I'm not a complete novice either. So there you go. Yeah. I mean, listen, ex- by expert, you mean I stand there and roll my eyes as I hold a microphone in front of a person's face. Yep, I'm an expert. <laughs> well, we did a bit of uh, digging into another story that people have been asking about let me just get this up so this was a question that was posed by voices of wrestling wasn't it they brought up the fact that new japan has had incredible growth in the last four years but in japan tv still at 2 30 a.m so we asked around did a bit of digging about how important tv would be for the company and whether or not they'd be able to get a better time slot in the future didn't we did we did um, and I and and you know with all the buzz about here in the states and and again I say in the West, including our friends in Canada and Europe and everywhere else in the world world besides Japan, uh, how important TV is right and and the deals that are being made here, impacting growth, impacting success, impacting uh, revenues. And how important that is to to New Japan because the growth of this company, and and let's not kid ourselves, the growth has been astronomical when it comes to profitability for New Japan Pro Wrestling in the past handful of years. Right, uh, profitability wise, they are head and shoulders above just about any other time in in their existence. Right, and TV really hasn't played a, a, a factor in that, right? It's kind of hard to 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 uh, look at a two th- two thirty two o'clock two thirty a.m. time slot as being anything impactful, right? Um, and is and 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 is that a barometer of success in Japan? Um, now they're on that TV. Was it? I always mispronounce it. TV is it uh, Ash, Ashihai? Ashi? Asahi. Asahi. Why do I? Why can't I pronounce that, Joel? Oh, why can't I pronounce Worcestershire sauce? Remember that bit in the Simpsons? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I can never. One say of my it. favorite flavors of crisps: Worcestershire sauce flavored crisps. Mm, delicious. Yeah, you know what? We haven't really had a lot of crisp talk from you. We need to bring back the crisp talk, don't we? We need to bring back. I'll tell you crisp. what. I'm going to Bangkok next weekend. I'm going to do some Thai crisp research and come back with a segment just for you, Damon. Now that you mention it on crisps in Bangkok, so there you go. Something now we're to talking. look forward to. All right. Yeah. I mean, the, the crisp in- intelligentsia is uh, they're, they're they're clamoring for more content. Uh, what were we talking about? We we're talking about TV and all that stuff. So yeah, because we we I, got some great information from our friends. Yes. I'm not going to name them, but can, can, 
Shall I just read off the message? I mean, you know who you are, and we thank you. Yeah. yeah. Can I just read off the message and uh, yeah. <laughs> pass it off as our own? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's pass right, it so, off as our own. <laughs> Uh, this is what I said. These are all my opinion. No, they're not. And this person said, our friend said, that they think the time slot does ultimately hurt the company. And from just the little tidbits we hear about TV Asahi, you know, we're hearing sort of they're complaining about this and digging their oar in and that, suggests that there's a certain amount of snobbishness towards pro wrestling in general, which is ironic considering TV Asahi were able to use the popularity of world pro wrestling to establish themselves in the 70s. And Japanese pro wrestling has as much in common with sumo as it does with American pro wrestling, which is why there's no intermissions or ad breaks. And the idea of quote-unquote TV tapings are completely foreign. But in order to reach the casual market, TV is still an important factor and the 2.30 a.m. time slot hurts the company (laughs) <laughs> in brackets, except for the coveted club and fisherman demographics. <laughs> While TV Asahi have shown good intent with setting up New Japan World, they have yet to commit fully to the level of support they were showing even in the mid-2000s, perhaps with Bushi Roads being the much more bullish partner. I think when they booked the Yokama Arena in 2014, that showed their intent. There might be a higher push factor. Ultimately, the company can fill out Tokyo Dome and reliably max out Krakow and Hall, even for a nothing show like Destruction Night 3. But that's based on word of mouth, quality of products, and advertising from Bushiroad. In order to capture the heyday of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, when everyone knew who Antonio Inoki and Giant Baba were, mainstream appeal needs to be achieved. And lately, uh, this person feels that New Japan are aiming for that in spite of, rather than as a result of, TV partnerships. Yeah. I mean, I think that was a really good point um, when, you know, you think about, and again, times change and, and things change and, and content distribution methods change. But when you look at it in, in the years that the, the, the network has been launched, the, you know, New Japan World has been launched, and, and, and that is the infrastructure of that, I'm sure is pretty daunting to be able to consistently and constantly, uh, house and be able to stream not only live content but but uh you know uh streaming content you know classic content whatever you want to call it um it's 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 a factor for them and it hasn't been a factor which is pretty amazing but i would think it is a factor for them to continue that push especially when it when you talk about growing a japanese market right um, everybody t- kind of points their finger at the Western expansion, and that's where we need to grow. And you know, there's there's a huge fan base in Japan that that is either you know has been left out in the cold, so to speak, and and maybe they once were pro wrestling fans, and now they're not, and they're coming back. And even a younger fan, um, and, and and other demographics, you know, a, a, a female fan, um, that that are being a growing audience that has just been word of mouth right by and large and and strength of of shows right? consistently and constantly putting on great shows that people talk about again leading to the word of mouth um and then going from there it's not like these people are tuning tuning in at two o'clock in the morning to watch a TV show um you would think that if you're a TV network executive and you're seeing this phenomenal growth from from a product that's already being produced right or helped to be produced by the tv network you would think that you would jump all over that you think that would be an easy easy win cheap programming that gets great ratings and has the potential to get greater ratings i would think that would be something that a tv network would jump all over. So basically, Damon, it's like the red circle advertising situation with us, just on a bigger scale. <laughs> yeah, you would think. Grimy, dirty Japanese pro wrestling. What is that? We're not giving them any live reads. Uh, yeah, it does. But you did ask a, a pertinent question. You said, 
is it because that they've been burnt by, as you said, dirty pro wrestling and they want to stay away? But our friend said they don't think so. A similar thing happened in the West as well when MMA became popular. Japanese TV stations have a superiority complex still, like NBC or ABC back in the day, or BBC still today. So they're still slow to the punch on booming cultural exports. So not a case of deliberate rejection so much as pompousness. But our friend did point out that NHK, which is the Japanese National Broadcasting Corporation, do go the other way and they are more positive about it. They see wrestling as a positive reflection of Japanese cultural exports. So they're happy to promote it, not for the entertainment value, but for the real politic benefit. So we've seen little segments on NHK about, um, they have one about the, was it the MSG show or the G1 in Dallas? I forget which one it was, but they, you know, good little 10, 15 minute segment saying, look at this Japanese product and how popular it is in the West. Yeah, and haven't they popped like uh, Harold on there every once in a while? You you see him? Would that be the NHK? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, again, well, listen, thank you, WH Park, for this information. (laughs) 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 Shh. Shh. Uh, Dan, edit that bit out. Yeah. Oopsie. Uh, No, I mean, look, it's. Here's what I find amazing, though, but because from from a, a again a Western perspective, is it the kind of and it might not even be this network, so I might be talking at my ass. So just bear with me here. But is it the common misconception about Japanese, especially television programming, is it's absolutely fucking balls ass wacky? Like they're the country and they're the networks that are going to invent. All these crazy game shows and crazy uh, uh, sort of pseudo reality TV show uh, where people are falling from great heights and 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 getting smashed with all this stuff. Like, aren't there? These are the people that are originating. That's just BBC it. News. Oh. <laughs> that's that's Boris Johnson, mate. <laughs> My bad. My bad. It's Fox News. Uh, no, it's you know what I mean. Like, isn't that like? Don't they have the, the the reputation of being the groundbreaking country when it comes to their, their television shows? Yeah, I'm not sure how true that is these days. That was certainly the stereotype, like around, I'm thinking like the mid-90s. That certainly was the reputation for just like wacky game shows and things like that. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is is imagine if they did have that full support. Of a, of a television program, again, 11 o'clock at night. You know, there's a big difference between 11 o'clock at night and 2.30, let's be honest. Uh, you know, 11 o'clock. Uh, 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 or, you know, oh my, oh my God, imagine at 10 o'clock, right? Just an hour shot. Um, how much more, uh, and again, I don't want to say mainstream fan, but how, how much more mainstream fan would this company, how, how much growth would we be seeing? How different would New Japan be if they had that? Um, this, again, I, I, I hate to, to reinforce this, but this is a company that has had so much growth, profitability-wise, for, on the backs of producing consistently great shows, you know, advertising by Bushi Road, and word of mouth. TV is really not 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 in the equation. Um, to me, that's a, that's a, that's you know I, I'm I'm very glad that Voices of Wrestling brought that up um, because it is an underrated success story for New Japan, the success that they've had. Um, and again, Cork and Hall filling up the Tokyo Dome. We got two Tokyo Domes they're filling. Who does that without TV? Who does? I mean. Concert wise, I mean, there's got to be that 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 massive promotional vehicle to allow these uh, uh, boy bands and 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 you know when we're there, they have concerts every night, and then it's New Japan Pro Wrestling hops in, and then it's concerts every other night. Um, you know, to allow that, you know, we all know the, the 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 machine that is the music industry. You know, New Japan Pro Wrestling really doesn't have that. Um, and, and their stars are, you know, they they have a handful of, of people that are mainstream, but they're not even their top stars at this point. It really is an amazing success story that really hasn't been 
talked about or, or, or covered in any way. So I hope you all look forward to hearing that segment on the Voices of Wrestling flagship. Come out this Friday, prefaced by the caveat, no one's talking about this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you they, they don't listen to us, Damon. <laughs> no, no. I, but here's the thing, too. I will say this. Um, and I said it before. I don't really listen to a ton of other podcasts. Um, only because I don't feel like, when I say other podcasts, other pro wrestling podcasts, only because I don't like the fact that sometimes, and I'm guilty of it, I, I do get, I, I'm guilty of it, that I'll hear things and it'll, it, it might sway my opinion one way or another and I'd rather give it just me. You know what I mean? I, I do let other voices, pardon the pun, influence sometimes my thinking on things. And it, and it may help me see things that I didn't see before, but I'd rather be – I'd rather make a dumb take than give a take that has been uh, tainted with by other voices. I'd rather give you raw and then come back and be like, oh, you know what? That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. As opposed to hearing different things and being like, oh, that that's you're not getting pure Damon. Yes. We don't want to be like a news digest to other people's opinions. I, I definitely hear you on that one. Um, all right. Well, the next piece of news here is a New Japan Showdown in Los Angeles. is coming to the Globe Theatre on November 11th. So this is a second California show right after the San Jose show on the 9th. And this is going to be their first Monday night show in the States, Damon. Oof. What do you think is the significance of that? Um, oh, I don't know. Look, it's, it is L.A., mind you, but a Monday night? That's kind of, I don't want to, don't, it's, this is not a throwaway show. Please, let's not take it as such. But, um, look, a, a Monday night for a random New Japan show, people got to work. <laughs> people got to work. Um, it's, it's, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how that one will fly. Um, I saw that Monday night and I was, I was a little bit taken aback by it. Um, this is a, this is a, a traditional weekend pro wrestling country. It's kind of hard to, to pull out a Monday night. So uh, I'd be very curious to see how that one goes. The other thing I wanted to touch on was this situation in rev pro wrestling uh -oh. about their referee here we go yeah which i i did debate is this within the remit of the super j cast but rev pro are one of the partners of new japan and you know we talk about ring of honor a lot so i thought this one was worth mentioning so the gist of the story for anyone who's missed it was that during summer sizzler during the tag match between shah samuels and josh bodom against aussie open that the match finished earlier than it was supposed to. So the referee counted three. And from what everyone tells me, he was right to do so. So he was calling it like a shoot. And whoever it was, I, I don't know exactly if it was Samuels or Bodom, basically just didn't kick out in time. And then following that, there was a bit of confusion, a lot of protesting to the referee. And Shah Samuels just tried to capitalise on it and make the most of a bad situation. So apparently said to this referee, I, I should try and find the guy's name, actually, um, Aaron Wilde. So said to Aaron Wilde, body slam. So he picked him up and delivered a, a scoop slam, a body slam to this referee. And from what I hear from everyone, like perfectly textbook, safe, by the book, protected him all the way down, did a body slam. And then Josh Bodom grabs the referee drags him out of the ring and from the video footage I've seen he just he looks like he's just battering him basically just assaulting him with knees and fists and just giving him a big kick in and Aaron Wilde then went public on Twitter and said that he was going to have to retire because he sustained some serious injuries he couldn't do his full-time professional job anymore which was refereeing football matches and things got very ugly and Josh Bodon was on I think it was Instagram throwing Andy Quilden under the bus, showing screenshots of a message from Andy Q saying, like, oh, this guy's making a stink. Don't worry, we'll protect you. And then it transpired today that they uh, released Josh Bodom. So very ugly situation, Damon. What did you make of it all? Yeah. I mean, um, it's one thing when 
Here's what I don't like. I don't like when uh, – listen, I never like a shoot, right? Because if somebody's going to take the liberty of trying to deliberately hurt someone for, again, something as minor as, as a three count and, – and, again, it's the ref's job. In my mind, the ref counts it like a shoot. It's, it's the wrestler's responsibility to kick out or do whatever. That's number one. Two wrestlers get into a shoot. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, it's just mind-numbingly stupid to me. But okay, they're two wrestlers. Things get physical. It's competitive. Okay, things happen. Miscommunications, what have you. But to shoot on a fucking referee. I mean, come on. And I saw it too. I saw the the the, the footage, and there was you know. At first, it looked like, and this was outside the ring, you know, the ref is trying to turtle a little bit. He's just trying to cover up. And then Bodum's just laying in shots. But it looked like they were the old, I'm going to hit you hard in safe spaces, in spa- safe places thing. You know, he was hitting them in the back of the, you know, the shoulder blades area, it looked like. And then there was one knee that just plastered him. And then he's just, you know, again, still teeing off on him. Look, I, 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 I don't see how that could. I don't see how assault can be acceptable in any fashion. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't know. Um, I was reminded of a time when, and and this is not even a a a, a referee. This this is you know pro wrestlers and you know someone who's pretty notorious for being a little a little rough around the edges new jack uh and the, the way that he beat up he was like the like the the ECW's favorite jobber dude, Chad Austin Chad Austin he was from Maryland we love him cuz he would he would just take all these crazy bumps and shit um good guy he seemed like a good guy we talked to him a couple times um New Jack destroyed him during this match. I mean, destroyed him with a chair. And then after the match, he's whacking him with this chair, just just killing him. Um, and he hits him in the leg like three times. And Chad Austin breaks it. It broke his leg. Like he, New Jack hit him with a chair so hard, it broke his leg. Like, it's just, like, I don't understand that. Like, what is the mentality there? Like, what, what... Uh, that that you're so out of it that you feel the need to do that. Like it just makes it makes zero sense to me. Um, but and here's the thing too, he's 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 going down in flames and he's taking people along with him. Um, Apparently he's got previous for that. What's that? What's that? Apparently he does that a lot when he's in trouble. He'll just try and drag some people down with him. Yeah. Um. Pro wrestling, I, I I hate to break the bad news to people. It's not, <laughs> it's not this feel good unicorn and rainbows type of thing. It's and even in this day, I mean, I understand it's not 1979, uh, and they're not doing 200 miles an hour driving from town to town with a with a six pack of beer in their hand. It's it's pro wrestling. And I'm and I'm not saying that to throw my hands in the air and say things can't change and things can't improve and things should improve. Not saying that at all. But there is a certain still a certain element of what pro wrestling is. And I'm sure that there are independent pro wrestlers out there listening to this show right now that could tell you stories of uh oh, the old guy shot on me and taught me a lesson. Or Oh, uh, this promoter fucked me over, and this che- this check is still bouncing. Um, the old "Don't cash this till Tuesday." I can't tell you how many times I fucking heard that story. Um, it's pro wrestling, and it's not a great thing to be in, <laughs> right? Involved in. Uh, look, everybody questions why why would these people go to the WWE and 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 the WWE being the, the largest most uh professional the closest thing you're going to get to a a professional sports organization uh in pro wrestling right 
uh, the cream of the crop, if you will, and there's still horror stories there, right? Where, what do you think is going to happen in places like, I don't know, RevPro or what have you? Right? Yes, they acted somewhat swiftly to suspending and cutting ties and all that. But to me, in some fashion, this feels like a situation where, okay, we finally had to do a swift response because this is not blowing over, right? That's, that's, that's somewhat of a shame of this situation is that it feels like from adding up the timelines that this is, oh, now we have to do something swift and final and, and be because more shit is being released about the situation than I care to have released. Now we got to cut ties. Now we got to do this. So look, it's a shit situation all the way around. I hate the idea of it, of it even occurring in 2019, but it still does. I don't, to me, this doesn't impact New Japan in any way. Um, these are people that probably wouldn't be on a New Japan show. Um, this is a person who has a history of being on tours in Japan and finding ways to fuck that up, right? All Japan, look it up, right? Super kicking a window, is it? So I don't think they're going to step foot on a New Japan door. Does this impact the relationship with Rev Pro? I'll tell you what, what it does do is it is it puts Rev Pro in a little bit of a shaky ground. I'd, I'd like to see what the next show, show does, how, how the British pro wrestling fans respond to Rev Pro and this situation. I, I'd like to see that, um, to see if there's any ramifications of that screenshot of, hey, we got your back. This referee's just making a lot of noise. I'd like to hear that. Um, and see how that is. Um, but to me, I don't think this is something where New Japan Pro Wrestling is going to run from Rev Pro. Any blame for Shah Samuels? Or do you think referees should be prepared to take bumps at a moment's notice like that? No, I, I they, they should be prepared to take bumps. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with going and I'll put this in the air quotes, off script, and, you know, we're going to toss you outside the ring because we're heels and we're angry and, and that's what heels do. You've seen that all throughout pro wrestling. It's the fact that you're going to take liberties with somebody's health in, in doing that. The slam, I don't have a problem with, right? I don't have a problem. We It happens all the time. Every pro wrestling show, you know, there's, there's the opportunity for that. And to be able to improvise that, no, that's fine. Um... I mean, most referees are trained on how to take a bump, uh, and if they're not, they, they uh, to me, I f- I'm I'm going to say this: they sh- shouldn't be in the ring if if they haven't been trained on how to take a bump. Um, no, I mean th- I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with, oh, you're going to punch me in the face <laughs> and and knee me in the head. Uh, yeah, that's there. There, there's a line. And and it was definitely 100% crossed. So while Brit Rest is burning to the ground around us, like everything else in the UK, Tokyo Sports have announced that New Japan is interested in creating a UK dojo. I don't know if there are actually any professional wrestlers left in the UK uh, after <laughs> uh, right. NXT UK hoovered them all up. But uh, there we go. They're interested in creating a UK dojo. Any thoughts on that? Uh, look, they're they're just trying to get their foot and in, in, in on as many places as they can. Uh, always looking for talent. Um, I think with a lot of the people that they have, um, that that you know have a UK base, it it'll help you know kind of collect those those people that might be interested in a career in pro wrestling, right? And and having that presence of having an option. And, and and having an option and not just having um, promotions that they might be 100% familiar with, you know, give, giving them an option. Um, it's just a bit know. scary when you look at you know, companies like uh, World of Sport, uh, WCPW, Five Star, yeah. like big money mark TV promotions, all gone now. I'm not yeah. saying that New Japan are going to sink a load of money into this, but... It's not the healthiest scene at the moment, is it? 
No, no, it's not. Um, I will say this. Just, you know, I, I can't imagine it. And you're right. I don't think it's going to be something where they're sinking a ton of money into it. I mean, a warehouse, you know, a, a garage and a ring, you know, might not might be the beginning and the end of it. Um, but it is an option for people. Yeah, I mean, that. I'm sure there's a lot of factors that go into it, and it, and a lot of those factors kind of go into the the idea that I just talked about of pro wrestling not being the greatest business to be involved in. You know, it's it. There are some great people in pro wrestling. Some of the best people I've ever met were because of pro wrestling. But you know, in it just and, and I'm far removed from it, Joel. I'm I'm pretty far removed from it, but. I go to any convention, go to any show, and and there's wrestlers, and go to go, you know, talk to any independent. You're going to hear the horror stories. There, every pro wrestler has the horror stories. Now, some people will tell you that it's part of the business, and it's part of you know, getting you know, taking your licks and earning your keep, and blah blah blah. You know, other people with maybe a little distance from it, I might tell you, you know, that oh, this, you know, it's just, it's just. It's it's pro wrestling. It's a business built on carnies. Uh, so, you know, look, you, it, 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 I, again, I don't want to shoulder shrug and just say it is what it is, but there's a reason why all those promotions fold and all those promotions get swallowed up and all those promotions uh, struggle to stay afloat. You know, there, there, there's, there is a reason. Um, and I don't think you, it takes much to put two and two together. This is something that's just popped up on the timeline, Dateman. Pro Wrestling Noah are running two Cracker and Hall shows, January 4th and January 5th. What? So the January 4th one, 6.30pm, running directly against Wrestle Kingdom first night. The January 5th one is 11.30 in the morning, so you could catch both. But that is quite ballsy, isn't it? Where Did they say where, where they're running? In Krakow. Tokyo? Really? Krakow and Hall. Yeah. So Claire and Kyle, you got a tough decision to make. Yeah, drinking with us or or, or watching that nonsense. <laughs> no, nonsense. That's good. Uh I, I say that because I know it'll just rile rile them up. Um I did drinking with us. Fuck that. Um Wow. Well look, you know, let's let's think about this for a second. What other time of the year are you going to get such a conglomerate of pro wrestling fans from all over the world, right? You know, for, especially for a Japanese audience, you know? I mean, that's the date. That, that Those are the days to do that, right? Um, so, look, sometimes it, it comes down to, hey, look, there's a Noah show. Let's fucking go. You know what I mean? And then we'll go, you know, we'll make it a whole day. Um, and, and I... Yeah, but the Jan- January fourth one, six thirty p.m. That is directly up against Wrestle Kingdom for the yeah, first night. Yeah, that's nonsense. That's crazy. Six thirty. Yeah, I didn't take that in consideration. Yeah, directly right up against it. That's madness. Well, look, you know, a lot of people they'll tell you that people have just have allegiance. You know, they're going to stick with their team. They're going to stick with their brand. Um, I can't imagine that doing super well. I mean, you know what? Maybe it will. I, I head to head with. Oof. All right, you're a Noah fan, Joel, uh, and you live in Tokyo. Are you going to fight the congestion and the and the train and all that to get to Corkin for a Noah show, knowing full well that forty thousand people are going in the other direction? Yeah, you know, I'm just thinking, how's that going to work for the January 4th one? Because if that's 6.30, then you'd imagine most people would be in the dome by then. Yes. But your journey home, you're going to have to be squeezing in alongside 40,000 odd New Japan fans. So it's the journey yeah. home that is the the one that's going to give you a headache there. Well, it's only going to be 100 people. So, <laughs> 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 so it's not that bad. Um, no kidding. Come on. Just kidding, Noah Peeps. Uh, I lo- yeah, I can't, that's the, the the second show in the afternoon. Uh, I think that's actually I, I I'm all I'm all I'm all for that. I think that that's uh, take advantage of the crowds that are there. Great, 
The 6.30 show? Should we go? 11.30, uh, January no. 5th? We do no. our drink in in Caracuan Hall? No. No, I, I won't. No, I, I can't. I No, because no, we got to drink outside because I, you know, I got, I, I promised. I, uh, Cheryl will not go to, to, to a, she'll not step foot in a Noah show. I'm just, I, that just won't happen. It's just not going to happen. Um, no, we, that's got to be an outside. Show her a photo of Kato Kiyomiya. She might change her mind. Uh, she was at Corkin once. I told the story before. She was at Corkin Hall once, and we left four matches in because someone did a dive, and we had to scramble. We were in the second row, no barricade. Second row, junior tournament. You see the spot being lined up, guy outside the ring, right on our side. You know, he's doing a little squat, ready to hit, bounce off the ropes and do a dive and, and come right at us. And I grabbed her by the back of her shirt and moved her. And heard the chair that she was in was just smashed. And she just looked at me like, what the fuck is this? And we had to go. <laughs> like, I was like, well, we could stand over here. She's like, yeah. And I can see she's te- texting. Our friend Gabby had gone home early. She just got home. And she's texting her. And I see you come up. Pretend that you have diarrhea. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, if you just want to leave, we'll just leave. So, yeah, there's there's no shot on January 5th that we will be going to Noah. Zero shot of that happening. So how much did you have to sell the diary? Did you have to, like, squeeze out a few farts and be like, No, 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 no. I mean, Gabby was suggesting that Cheryl say um, that, oh, that, right. she, that she had diarrhea that. right there. So she had, we had to leave, right? That was the suggestion. That was the idea. Um, yeah, I was just like, just tell me, you know, and we can go. I can see it on your face. You don't want to, we'll, we'll go. I said, but we're going to fucking Ribera's. Sky, I don't even know what the fuck that is, but okay. And we went. All right, next thing I've got here is uh, an interesting interview with Shibata, which was on the New Japan website, where he was talking at length about the Young Lions. It's very interesting, so I do suggest anyone going to check it out. Some of the key points that came out of it, he says that the Japanese class of Young Lions play to the crowd too much he hmm. says that only Yuya Uemura feels truly fresh and also stress the importance of one-on-one rivalries is that something you've noticed like I don't know who that's leveled at specifically are we thinking guys like Narita or um Shota Umino playing to the crowd too much uh I mean what's too much right is, is even a little bit too much for him right at this point um hmm No, I mean, I don't, truth be told, I don't think I'm necessarily looking for that. In fact, I'm probably looking for it more than anything else. And when I do see it, I guess we would call it, you know, the fire. Uh, We get excited for it. Hmm. No, uh, I personally don't. Now, again, there, there are, they're at that young lion stage, so I'm sure there is that expectation of, hey, you're, you, you're keeping it low-key in here. Uh, and it is Shibata, mind you, who you know, is maybe not necessarily known to playing toward the fans. But, no, uh, I, I, I don't think that there's – I'm really trying to rack my brain. Is there any one person where I would be like, yeah, I'm kind of – I feel that. I, I don't. Um, so it's, as uh, to me, that, that might be, uh, I, I mean, again, to me from, the, from an outsider looking in, it does seem like an odd critique. Are there any one-on-one young lion rivalries that have caught your attention? Are there any jumping off the page to you so far from this cohort? I, I, I find it strange when people talk about young lions and and try to put one of them ahead of the, of another um and the only way that i can can I, I at least i feel like and i've been watching this a long fucking time mind you the only way i can honestly sit here and say this one is better than the other ones is the connection that he makes with me on a 
I don't, I, I, th- I uh, emotional level is the wrong word, and I don't know if I have the right word. But there, there has to be a connection with me, for me to sit there and say, yeah, this one seems to be a notch above the other ones. I think they're all very good. And I hate to be like general about that. And I hate to be because to me, I I can't tell you, oh, that one puts on a an arm bar better than that one. Or that one Right, I mean specifically the pairings of them. Do you look at, for example, uh like do you think, oh, Narita Umino, that's gonna be the feud in the future or Uemura versus Suji, that's going to be the iconic one. Or Coughlin versus Fredericks, that's going to be the big one. Are there any pairings, any rivalries that excite you? I, I mean, I could sit here and... Like, I could just pick names out of a hat, I feel like, and be like, any one of those combinations that you named, I could pick out of a fucking hat and say... Yeah, that one. That one we'll see, and that excites me. Like I, I again, I hate to be that guy, but it's like all of them excite me. I don't. Is there? I think an even better. Here's the. Here's a to me, because because all of them I think are equally very good at at the stage of their careers in which they are. Who's the worst one? Like who? And I hate to 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 to, to shift it to a negative, but to me they're all really good. Like, but but who would be the one that wouldn't be as good? Is Clark Connors a step behind? Is is I, I'll tell you, I've got them all ranked. Though I can tell you, you have them all I'm ranked. To, well, I don't have them ranked, but I can tell you who the worst one is. I'm going to talk about the Young Line Cup in a minute, but uh, you go off, mate. What, no, what I'm going to say. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just like, like, but I, I just think that they're so close together, personally, that it's hard for me to 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 say this one. Outshines the other. Like, has ha, have we had some, you know, that have grown out of what would normally be considered young lionness? I mean, the whole shooter thing, right? Is 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 he head and shoulders above everybody else just because of the position that he was put in? I don't, I don't know. I, I I honestly don't know. So for me to sit there and rank, I'm I'm ranking on which ones have connected with me in some weird way, and I don't know if that's the right way for me to be ranking young lions. Yeah, you just you do get pairings of them that seem inextricably linked, like Yohei Komatsu Shotanaka, who had a big few ri- well rivalry going on in the dojo. Now they're tag team partners, but you think at some point in the not too distant future that may turn back into a, a rivalry or even a feud um like a jay white and a david finley that was one that when they're in the dojo i think a few people looked at went, oh we're keeping on this one yeah um, because yeah but, but but joel those like so this crop that we have right now we have we have like six seven eight people that you can go to i mean back then just a handful of years ago you had four you know what I mean? You had four that you could really pinpoint. Kuato, you know, Jay White. Uh, it, you know, it wasn't like you had eight or nine guys that you were that you could cherry pick from, like we do right now, which makes it so much more difficult. I do still think that rivalry thing is a really good way that you can hook the audience, and it's something that the whoever's booking the matches and laying out the schedules has an important role to play in making sure that it is a match that keeps coming up again, that you keep seeing these two guys paired off against each other so that it is a storyline you can build in when they each return from their excursions. But I do take your point that given there are more young lines than there have been in previous years, that is becoming less fixed than it once was. Right. I mean, you always saw, you know, show... And, and, and you know, well, you know the, the former, you know, show and yo, uh, you, you know, in there together. You always saw Jay White and and David Finley doing their thing. Um, Quato, you, you know, there were always those staples on the beginning of of these shows, and we have that here. We've had you know 
situations where, you know, oh, you're tied, you know, seven matches and they've all ended in time limit draws or whatever and, and, and nobody's gotten, gotten a, a, a clear – and then the people start winning and now it's tied at two. I get that. I, I understand that. But we got, we got eight, nine guys that, quite honestly, I could reach my name into a hat and pick a name out and I guarantee you they'll, they'll be the, the future of New Japan. Would they be IWGP heavyweight champion? I don't, I, I don't, don't, I don't know. But all of them are, to me, equal footing to ready to take that next level, if that's excursion. Excellent. So be it. Um, but it's hard for me. Uh, like, it's, it's kind of like, you know, I hate to bring back other sports, but it's kind of like, to me, I don't necessarily have that. I, I, I know what I, my eye test sees. When you get a guy like Shibata saying, oh, they played to the crowd too much, maybe I'm missing that. You know what I mean? Maybe that's something I, I can't judge their progress. That would not be a factor for me. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't feel like I'm qualified enough to say, oh, they really know how to cinch in an arm bar. Okay. I, I, uh, it looks good to me. Right. And that's, that might be an uneducated opinion. Well, here are my thoughts on the Young Line so far. So I've watched all of the Young Line Cup matches and I've really enjoyed it. It's a nice change of pace from the G1 where you're getting very short, tight matches and you're looking for these Young Lines to distinguish, differentiate themselves by putting on slightly different movesets or trying to build that connection with the crowd or try and sell uh, in a way that they, you know, maybe more exaggerated than they usually would. I don't know, but... uh, so far, well, we've got a question. Michael says, who's the most impressive young line and why is it Alex Coughlin? Now, Alex Coughlin has been very impressive. He looks a bit like Prince Devitt, actually. And his offence seems to be largely based on big chops. Very big, loud chops that the Caracol and crowd have been reacting very positively to. And he's got a very sexy, bridging Indian deathlock submission move. So he has definitely stood out and uh, distinguished himself so far in this cut. Uh, Michael Richards, I would say, is the weakest of the eight so far. He looks a bit like Carl Anderson. He's a bald fella. Gurns a lot. Very exaggerated facial expressions. Um, I wouldn't say green, but definitely less advanced in his skill set than the other young lines are. Clark Connors is like a, a smaller Josh Barnett lookalike guy. And he's shown some interesting ring tactics and psychology. Like he was targeting Carl Frederick's shoulder in the match that they had together. He's got a nice spear as well. But that's something you don't often see in Young Light matches where someone's going after a body part, which I thought was quite interesting. Uh, Carl Fredericks, again, we've spoken about him a lot. He just, he looks like an ace. He look, He's very good looking. Reminds me a lot of the uh, French footballer Olivier Giroud. Kind of guy that Vince McMahon would have pushed to the moon in the mid-2000s. Almost aesthetically reminiscent of like a, a young Randy Orton with the tattoos and the body. And just he's doing little things that make him stand out, like trash talking during the chop exchange, which is something you don't really see young lines doing often. He's got a bit of that swagger already. He's got some nasty looking European uppercuts, nice shotgun drop kick. And he's quite versatile as well. In some matches, he's able to be the bully because he's quite a big lad, physically dominate his opponents. Or like I mentioned in the match against Clark Connors, he's working from beneath because of his injured shoulder. So, Showing that sort of versatility early on is always a good sign. My, uh, well, a lot of, uh, the one that Shibata mentioned as being the, the freshest of the bunch, Yuya Uemura. He is, he's quite a dark horse. He's come on in leaps and bounds since we first saw him. And he's an incredibly beautiful man as well. He's got very fine features. He looks, he looks like Bruce Lee, actually. And he's mm. got real baby face star vibes. Almost, you could see him being like a, a kind of Kushida role in the future where, uh, you know, all the ladies get behind him. But my favourite, not necessarily because he's technically better than the others, just the one that I've got a personal connection with would be Yotosuji so far because he's he's the big guy, he's the hoss. He had a really good match with Alex Coughlin on the first day and I could really see him just sliding into that never title picture, having hard hit matches against guys like Hinare or Oka. And he's just my guy. You know, in every young line class, there's one guy that you sort of gravitate towards and Suji is one who definitely uh it's my favorite at the moment he's just got a great look he's got like a just a tiny bit of a belly which definitely sets him apart from you know the the ripped shredded six-pack chests of all the other ones 
he's got a, c- kind of a stick like a a barroom brawler. He'd be sitting there drinking his whiskey highball. And I know that's kind of Mario's gimmick, but he, you, you could sort of imagine him smashing his glass on the floor and being like, "Come on!" and attacking you with a <laughs> pork you or something. You got a and whole storyline for these giant... guys. <laughs> you get, yeah, you get a whole backstory that one for free. Okay, uh, and he's he's busting out a giant swing in his last match. And um, I just I like the way he looks. I like the way he sounds. I like the way he smells, Damon. I just, I just like everything about Suji. <laughs> wow. um, the others, I mean, Narita and Umino, we've seen plenty of them, so I can't really add too much. But um, that's what I think of the other six so far. And Young Lion Cup has been very enjoyable. I look forward to seeing how it plays out. Do you think that you let, and I know I'm guilty of it, do you think you let your pro wrestling biases seep into your evaluation of a Young Lion? In as much as if they are look like they're working towards a style that I enjoy more Correct. than another, that I will favour them more. Um, I suppose. I, I guess I've sort of outed myself with my love of Tsuji, who is mm-hmm. a guy that most people have said is lower on the, the ranking in terms of technical development, in terms of their skills. So... Yeah, I guess you could say that, but I don't think I'm being unfair on any of the others. Okay. Do, and and you look. I like the fact that you geek out over this. Like you, you. This is kind of a Joel thing. You know what I mean? Like you like the. You. I mean, I, I, again, just in a little bit that I know of you. Like this is something that that feels like would be in your wheelhouse. Like having these these seven eight guys and kind of finding where they fit in this pecking order is yeah, that great much so and you have to look a bit harder don't you and you do. search for those differences you do and and i and and that's where you hit a home run and like i feel like i i ground out <laughs> weekly to second because it's just not my thing like i just find it hard to find the the nuance between the best young lion and the worst young lion um so I'm going to ask you, what, what do you think is the margin? Is there a huge swing between the guy that you think is the best and and right now at the top position when it comes to young Lions and the guy that maybe you see struggling? Is there a huge gap between the two? No, not at all, because they've all got the basics down. They, can all, they all know how to put on uh, a crisp, exciting, well-paced, uh, technically proficient New Japan Pro Wrestling match. Okay. There's nobody there that I think, oh, they're going to really struggle. Right. I guess it what? just comes to a question of uh, charisma, doesn't it? Because well, that's the thing. It's yeah. the difference between like a, a Jay White and a David Finley. They can both work an excellent match. The match that they had together was great, but one of them is a former IWGP heavyweight champion at the age of what 26, and one of them, despite being injured, was just. Prior to injury, just doing a whole lot of nothing. Mid Carter, yeah. And, but yeah, but Mid Carter, you know, in that. terms of their skills, in in ring skills, technical skills, not that different. Right, right. So when you see a comment from Shibata saying, "Ah, uh, they might play to the crowd too much," in reading that, do you kind of say to yourself, "Well, well, that's 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 what I'm looking for at this point." Honestly, I took that as him a bit of kayfabe, isn't it? Because the LA Dojo guys, they're his boys. So maybe that was him just sort of throwing a shot at, oh, the kids that I've trained are better than the Japanese guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely see that. I don't know. It's it's like they're like just, again, I'm, I'm talking a lot of sports. I feel like I'm in a sports kind of frame of mind, but... Um, I have a friend uh, when it comes to the hockey, and his wheelhouse is uh, his name's Russ Cohen, uh, and Russ, his wheelhouse are hockey prospects. Like he's a guy that could tell you, oh yeah, this guy in junior is playing in, you know, in Barry, uh, has is projected to be this type of NHL player when he, you know if and when he gets called up or this you know. Or even below that, like, you know, when the draft comes, you know, and they're drafting these kids out of juniors and out of, you know, uh, colleges, like, he's the guy that helps rank those type of people. Um, So it's, 
you know, it's 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 hard for me to to kind of do that. But that's that's Russ. Um, he he loves to 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 see the potential. And sometimes you know he's a a huge swing and a miss. But sometimes it's a home run. Um, so that that it, like talking to people like that that can do that that can see these things and look for certain things in youngsters and young stars and seeing that growth I can appreciate because I don't know if I necessarily have that skill set yeah definitely it's I think something that maybe I gravitate more towards than other people um maybe I'm reading too much into it because sometimes I mean there's so many variables when it comes to whether or not a young line is going to be successful that it's just it feels like a bit of a crapshoot at times so I can sit here as much as I want overanalyzing these young line cut matches but you never know what's going to happen some of them just can't cut it you know you see guys like um Kitamura just disappearing from the scene guys like uh Tetsuhiro Yagi and Teruaki Kanemitsu retiring deciding for whatever reason that they wrestling is not for them anymore so you never know what's going to happen yeah exactly I mean I'm 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 slightly distracted also Joel I just got a a, a text um <laughs> from the great Real hero, hero Eric here at seven eighteen a.m. Uh, and and I'll read it uh, as it is. Uh, it's not as affecting for you since uh, the missus is going, but how about Noah fucking us for this trip? <laughs> well, that is the big news story, isn't it? It certainly is. Is he a big the, big fan of the old Noah, Eric? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, he's a fan of everything. Like, there's not. I don't think there's much aside from WWE. Um, the, the man is a pro wrestling machine. So yeah, he'll he'll watch everything. But usually usually that Noah show is um the day after Dash. It's usually the last show like the 7th it usually is at Corican. And it's usually yeah, the I last I'm watching a recent there've been some really nice Kiyomiya versus Keno matches mm-hmm. they've got on that date. Yeah. Though that'll be the last show everybody goes to. And everybody's kind of at that point, you know, they know it's the last show. So some of, some of us are just dragging their asses to get there, you know, just to be like, okay, it's the last time I see you till next year, blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, now, it, now he's like, well, look, you're going, you're drinking it outside. Relax. But you're, first of all, nobody's, I can't say nobody's going to the, to, to the Noah show I, uh, on, at 630. But um, because they're going to get their hardcore fans. They absolutely will. Um I can't imagine that being a good idea. The second show, taking advantage of the afternoon show? Yeah, absolutely. What what it's going to do, though, it's going to fuck up our meetup, is what it's going to do. It's going to fuck up our uh, meetup for TGI Fridays. Um, that's, that's, that's probably the one thing that it might... And even then, I, I can't see it messing it up too much. But yeah, that's... Uh, man, I tell you what, we're talking more Noah than we are New Japan here today. <laughs> All right, I, I've got a grumpy kitten who wants to leave the bedroom so i'm going to let her out before i do that i'm going to ask you a question one of the other talking points that's come out of these road to destruction shows it looks like the suzuki liger feud is back on so damon where do you think that ends up whilst i let the cat out all right you do that well to me i think it stretches all the way to at least one of the two wrestle kingdom shows i really do and I think that has been in the works for quite a while now. Uh, could they have one match? Yes, before the Dome? Sure. That doesn't mean they can't continue it into the Dome. Um, personally, I feel like that you save it for the Dome. That's, that's when you do the singles match. You might have a tag match in some way leading up to the Dome, even to even uh, further fan the flames of getting that going but i think i think the singles match i'll say is going to happen and it's going to occur on uh january 5th that that in my heart i feel that that will happen i could be dead wrong but we'll see but i liked it i mean it was it, it came surprisingly shockingly uh out of left field i think people sort of forgot about the idea of those two having a little little spat and a little argument with G one and everything else that occurred, um, it got you got you fired up again for it, didn't it? There's a nice little angle uh, that doesn't you know. Wh- here's the thing: when something like that occurs, 
again, we're, we're attacking a guy at the color commentating table. Uh, and the way that it occurred, dragging him into the ring, gotch style pile driver. Uh, that was exciting. That, that, that got the juices flowing again for this. Um, so I think everyone to a, to a person is, would be excited. I don't think, look, there's been so many different possibilities that have been thrown around for this, this retirement match. I think this one is one of the, the, the better ones. Um, now there are people that are, that are saying, Hey, you know, uh, the idea of Shibata returning and facing Kenta, Suzuki, Liger, a mini tournament for Tokyo Dome. To me, that's that's the making of a pretty good pro wrestling weekend. Um, I would have no problem having this at, 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 at Tokyo Dome and saving it. So again, just to go on record, I would say my prediction would be they'll have a tag match to help further it along because we do have a little bit of time before we get to the Dome. The dome. But I think the end result, the end, uh, the goal will be Suzuki Liger, Tokyo Dome, January 5. Yes, and I hope they have some sort of interesting stipulation whereby Suzuki has to put his career on the line as well. So it's a sort of career versus career, but not quite. So you're either going to get one retirement or a double retirement. But uh, yeah, that would be great. Um, other thing, the only other thing that I thought was interesting from the Road 2 shows were, I don't know if you've seen this clip of Gorillas of Destiny coming out and there's a fella wearing an AEW t-shirt hot off the back of our discussion last week about wearing the wrong shirts to wrestling shows and they spot this guy in the AEW t-shirt. Have you seen this? <laughs> I did not see this, no. Yeah, they they didn't do anything. I mean, I'm half, you know, you never know with Gorillas of Destiny if they're going to rip the shirt off the guy's back or whatever. But uh, they just, they certainly had a wry smile on their faces and as uh, Tamatonga pointed out to his brother and... Have you seen some of Tamatonga's shenanigans on Twitter recently? He went that off I on have. Flip yeah. Gordon and Ring of Honor. So uh, Flip commented or something, replied to someone, made, made a comment about Bullet Club, and Flip said, they still a thing. And then Tamatonga replied saying, it's your company, which is brilliant. you got to love Tamatonga's <laughs> Twitter game. <laughs> it is strong, isn't it? Uh, I, I, don't think anybody, I don't think anybody complains about Tamatonga, except in... Singles matches in G1, <laughs> right? Right. Everything else seems to be seems to be in line. Um, we we really really haven't had much to to bitch and moan about when it comes to Tamatanga this year, right? Uh, would we go on record right now, Joel, as saying not only Tamatanga but God in general? They've had a pretty decent 2019. It hasn't been horrible, has it? There hasn't been anything great. There haven't been any matches where I thought, oh, this was really brilliant stuff. But there hasn't been anything bad either. They've all been solid, like three, three and a half star, just solid tag matches. Yeah, yeah. And and that's that's like everywhere they've gone. Like even the stuff that they that they have done for Ring of Honor hasn't been horrific. Um, it, it's been solid. I mean, on shows that you know, <laughs> you know, nobody's seeing apparently. Um, you know, they're 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 decent matches. They're usually one of the one of the two better matches of the of the show. Um, and even recently, you know, on the the, the, the real. Quest show that that I, I enjoyed that match a lot. I thought that was one of the best God matches I've seen um, in their run. I they're, they're, I, do, me, I do think I enjoyed T- Tamatonga more out of the ring than I do in ring because his out of the ring stuff has just been great this year. Like after the MSG, him flinging the ring of one of the titles on the floor, saying yeah, "piece shit. of shit, ROH, <laughs> no one gives a fuck about them." Right, that was, but sorry, I interrupted you. You, you were saying no, something. No. No, no. I mean, just agreeing with that, you know, just his outside game has been has been so strong that maybe that maybe that's 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 clouding my my judgment of his in ring performance. But the the out of the ring stuff has actually been been spot on. So yeah, that that was. Let me ask you this: that's probably one of the top five moments, like of of pro wrestling this year. 
right? Just that yeah, one. Yeah, he just captured clip. the mood, didn't he? That's what everyone was thinking right after yeah. that show. And he just knocked it out of the park with that. Yeah, so great. No, it really would be one of the top five moments of the fucking year. Ah, uh, great job. All I right. think part of the problem with them is they're just lacking in fresh opponents because we've just seen them feud with the same old people again and again and again. And that's what maybe was so interesting about the Aussie Open match that we got to see a fresh match for a change. So hopefully we're going to see some fresh stuff coming up in these Destruction shows, which we'll preview now. So Sunday, September 15th, we've got Destruction in Beppu. We have two Young Lion Cup matches opening up. We've got Yotosuji versus Carl Fredericks and Shota Umino versus Alex Coughlin. Again, two matches that I'm looking forward to because I like all of those guys involved. Then we got an uh, eight-man tag. Uh, Uemura, Narita, Taguchi, Nagata versus Richards, Connors, Hinare, Nakanishi. Fourth match, we have Shoyo and Liger versus Doki, Kanemaru, and Suzuki. So we're getting another... Liger versus Suzuki in a six-man tag there. Mm-hmm. Then we got 10-man uh, Eagles, Osprey, Honma, Makabe, Ibushi versus El Fantasmo, Ishimori, Yujiro, Fale, and Kenta. Sixth match, we got Rocky, Goto, and Okada versus Bushi, Shingo, and Sanada. Whew. Seventh match, Evil and Naito versus Chase and Jay White. Eighth match, IWGP Tag Team Championship match with Yoshihashi and Tomohiro Ishii versus Tangaloa and Tamatonga. So, am I right in saying Yoshihashi has never won a New Japan title before? Uh, that would be correct. Unless there is a random never six-man title that I'm forgetting, which could very well be a possibility. I'm almost certain um, he has not had any gold. So, there's big stakes here. This could be Yoshihashi's first ever taste of New Japan gold. So that alone surely <laughs> adds a bit of excitement to the match. And it is a fresh team. It is. And, you know, there's something to be said for Ishii and Tangaloa, two, you know, big boys going at it together. How do you feel about that match? I'm tentatively well, looking forward to it. Right. That's, that's that, that You couldn't have said it any better. I'm tentatively looking forward to it. Yes. Um, because it does check those boxes, right? Fresh matchup. Ishii who will always deliver the goods. If it's a sprint, you got a decent chance of, of G.O.D. putting on a, 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 a solid performance. Yoshihashi is not bad. Again, the biggest complaint that most people have is just that he's, you know, a, you know, a fucking bag of socks. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, this is arguably the, the biggest spot that Yoshihashi's been given... What, since the New Japan Cup? So you be, be think you think surely that he's got to make the most of it here. And I imagine he's going to be the baby face in peril for most of this, going yeah. trying to get the hot tag from Ishii to clean house. But he's got a point to prove here. He does. And if anybody's, if you're circling anybody to be the pin taker, you, you know who. Look, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Could... I'm forgetting that match he had with uh, Zach where he challenged Zach for his G1 oh, right. spot, didn't he? <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> We're counting that? Okay. All right. What, ch- what uh, chance do you think they've got? Do you put the belts? Seriously. Do, what? You're putting and the belts This is a big run for GOG, so I should point out, this is the sixth defense for Gorillas of Destiny. So this is quite a run, especially with tag titles in New Japan. You don't often get them going this long. Mm-hmm. So I do feel that... For all my bitching about this G.O.D. title run, they have built it up to the point at which I think them losing it does feel kind of big. As far as the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships go. I don't know, man. I got to be honest with you. I'm struggling with the idea of of putting your tag... I mean, you're putting your tag strap on Yoshihashi. For all for all the people who want to rally behind the young lady crying in the video, who tugs at my heartstrings too, don't get me wrong. We're gonna put we're gonna put the fucking tag straps on Yoshihashi. You got the guts to do that? No, I think the yeah. play is that they lose, and then Ishii goes, "This partner's no good. I need someone else from Chaos," and recruits Hiroki Goto. That's what everyone wants, but that's what everyone wants. not what we're going to get. 
It's not what we're gonna get. <laughs> uh, I think I think Yoshihashi is your pin taker. To be to be frank, I think uh, I don't think we see a tag title change. All right, and our main event: British Heavyweight Championship match: Hiroshi Tanahashi defending against Zack Sabre Jr. Fifth time we're seeing this this year. They've run it very fast turnover since Royal Quest. Do you think that means Zack wins it back? Or do you think Tanahashi holds on to it, maybe onto the Dome? Maybe Tanahashi versus Osprey at the Dome for the British Heavyweight Championship? How do you see this one playing out? I mean, with all due respect to the British Heavyweight Championship, I don't think you put Tanahashi defending that title on the on a Dome show. Do you? I I, I, I don't. I think he's tied up with Jericho, personally. But um... Right. Right. Um... I think there's a very strong possibility it flops back to to Zach. I mean, again, we're doing a rematch this quickly, l- literally weeks after the, the the title change. Just seems like this that was a let's pop the crowd, change it, switcheroo, kangaroo it back. Um, again, that's what feels and to an me. excuse to have the rematch, right? Right, there's no other reason. I mean, five times we're seeing this, and again, we talked about the turkey sandwich being delicious. But this is this is this is the end of the road for this. I hope, I hope. Um, we, we've kind of beaten this. It's starting to look a bit green. It's turned <laughs> yeah, a funny right. color. You know, I don't know how much more of this turkey we should eat. Yeah, it just doesn't look safe, does it? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it is perfect. Well said again. It is starting to turn green. So uh, let's let's do this. Let's get let's pick apart the carcass for all the the good bits, and then let's toss it in the in the in the bin because uh, I don't think we can stomach any anymore. And then on Monday we got destruction in Kagoshima. Um, you know when I started reading out the card for the Beppu show, I immediately regretted it. After I got to like match three, I'm like, why the fuck am I reading out these <laughs> nothing Tag matches? matches. So, Multi-man I tag, am going to skip tag. straight to the eighth match. I'm going to learn my lesson here. Right. Eighth match, we've got IWGP Junior Tag Team Championship. The Birds of Prey, Robbie Eagles and Will Ospreay challenging Bullet Club team of El Phantasma and Taiji Ishimori. This is anything like the match at Royal Quest. It's going to be great. And presumably they're going to get even more time. And I'm excited by this one, Damon. Yep. Yep. This is, this is a match I have circled. Um, it will be fun. They'll give it time. A lot, a lot of stakes on the line. Um, we might get two belt Billy. I think you might. I think you might. Look, it's, it, again, it's it's the junior tag belts. It's not like, uh, you know, if, if we're going in pecking order, this these these titles are down the bottom of the barrel. You know, they're not quite never six man, but you know, in the pecking order of New Japan, they're they're, they're low. They're they're you you know on on a on a uh, Tokyo Dome show their first match, second match, <laughs> yeah with a with a with a schmaz with four teams in it, um, but yes I think uh, I think we will I think we will see Billy Two Belts um, and uh, they'll be your new IWGP Tag Team Champions. Uh, you- so. Do you think that would then mean that El Fantasma is going to beat Osprey for the junior heavyweight title at, what is that, King of Pro Wrestling? Yeah. Yeah, King of Pro Wrestling. Mm. I'll tell you what. They got no problem with the guy doing well, right? They got no problem with the guy getting the getting that heel push. It would not shock me. I'm, I'll tell you flat out, it would not shock me. Look, to me, here's the thing. I'm going to throw out a name that I truly and honestly believe in my heart. That, and I know we've said this before, Joel. I need, I need you to take a deep breath with this one, because I know we've gone this down this road before. That old town road, as they say. That song is the one. You know that song? Gonna take my horse to the hunt. You know that song? Tell me you know that song. Uh, I don't, I, maybe. If I listen to it, I'd probably recognize it. Yeah, probably in my version. You're probably not getting it. Um, 
I'm going to get to my point. My point is this. How about that Hiromo Takahashi? We haven't heard from him. It's king of pro wrestling. This is a uh, perfect opportunity for a young man to make a return, point a finger at a belt, and say, I challenge you at the Dome. Do you give me a scale? I know we're skipping ahead here, and to 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 to, to kind of connect the dots here. Yeah, I think there's a there's a very good possibility we might see a title change. But would you keep the title on Will? Point the finger, and away we go at at Tokyo Dome. Hiromo, Will Osprey. Oh, I thought you were suggesting that El Fantasma wins. Okay, and everyone's booing him. You know he can insult some more <laughs> uh, people less fortunate than themselves right. just get a load of people going ah oh, fuck this guy and then Hiromu comes back to challenge him and Hiromu versus El Fantasma I thought that's what you meant okay um, well, we could do that hmm. we could do that to me a sexier match is is Will and Hiromu but okay I, I, would, I don't think anybody would have a problem if they did decide to do the title change get the title off of Will so he can concentrate on being a big boy um and having the, the, the biggest dick heel, shitbag heel, and a name that everybody's in love with and everybody can't wait to have return. What are you thinking? I like it. Yeah. I do like it. Because, you know, okay. I'm all someone who likes his emotional investment in matches. Oh. And I do like sometimes having a clear good guy and bad guy. Yeah, I'm you down like with this. both of them. Both like Osprey, Hiromu, El Fantasma, Hiromu. I just, just anything with Hiromu is going to be a win, to be honest. Give me a scale of 1 to 10. Do we see our favorite little, uh, our favorite little LIJ member with his, with his awesome leather jacket with the misfits and bad brains and dead Kennedys and all the, the punk band logos? Does he show up at King of Pro Wrestling? Scale of 1 to 10, Jolia Ram. I did say I've retired from... You did. Hiromu Are you coming out of retirement? Are you doing a Terry Funk? And this, this is the perfect moment for it, isn't it? This is it. We're going to pop a house, Joel. We need you. We need you to pop this house. I will give you... 7 out of 10. Woo! Yeah. I'll take a 7 out of 10. I'll take a 7 out of 10. Tell you what. Book it. Confirm. I can't wait to see. Super JKS confirms <laughs> with a 7. <laughs> Hiromo. Can't go pro wrestling. Book it. Book it. All right. I'm just saying, King of Pro Wrestling is, is, a, is a nice spot. We've been waiting a long time. I mean, we've heard that he's ready to go, right? We've heard they're just waiting for the, the time that medically he's raring to go. He's cleared. Right? Let's do it. King of Pro Wrestling. I want I want I want him to come out, point at that fucking belt. I challenge you at the Tokyo Dome. And there we go. Yeah, see, this is my conspiracy theory about why they're running the double dome. I think they just looked at all the stuff that was coming up. That you no, know, maybe some of it it was just good timing that they saw that they were gonna have Liger retiring, Shibata coming back, Hiromu coming back, and they thought, this is too much to waste on just one night of the Dome. So let's do two nights of the Dome, and let's throw in a cheeky little tournament for the two top belts there as well. So that is my working theory on what's going on. They just had too much good stuff for just, uh, one night of the Dome. Yeah, they're just hanging on to it and hanging on to it and hanging on to it. Well, you know, look. Sometimes I think they don't have that f that far in advance, but maybe they do. Who knows? But I'll tell you what. It just it does does add up that King of Pro Wrestling would be the time that we see a healthy Hiromo and Tokyo Dome is when he makes his triumphant return and away we go. If you did have those three things, let's say you have a Liga retirement match, Shibata comeback match, Hiromu comeback match, how would you spread those out amongst those two nights at Wrestle Kingdom to maximize ticket sales? All right, so you figure you're going to have the uh, two belts close the show, right? 
So that the yes. end of that mini tournament closes the show. Uh, we know Liger is going to be the fifth, right? We know his last match is going to be the fifth as well. So that's that. That's two juicy things, right? Right then and there, right? Um, just for what we know right now, it again, we don't know Shibata's coming back. We, we're we're hoping it's this is a a. Uh, want. Did you not see what it said on the uh, profile about it? That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they instantly took down. Did, you didn't see that? Uh, yeah, I saw it. Um, well, let's get this out of the way. Scale of one to ten. Shibata coming back. In a pro I feel that's a solid, a solid eight at this point, wow. just given the way the angle played out at the G1 final. I just, again, I've said it before, you don't do that unless he's coming back. And you give him the never title. That's that's Shibata's belt. That's Shibata's yes. title. You know what I mean? Like, it does just play to it. Now, would you be disappointed if one Hiroki Goto slides into that role not at all i think well i say not at all goto versus kenta for the never title is very fitting it matches the story it's a great chance uh yet another goto redemption Mm -hmm. i don't think the match would be great Uh but obviously compared to a shibata comeback it is disappointing but by no means a bad match right i would agree all right i'd lean more toward that that's the safe one right that is the safe pick, Goto, at this point. Boy, what, what fucking Shibata in that in that dome. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I don't mean physically fucking Shibata in the dome. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know what I mean. I'll be down um, for that too. <laughs> I know, I know you would. Um, oh, wouldn't that be so great? What a what a moment. What an absolute moment. Whew. Be great. All right. So, so back to, to my question. question. Yep. You're, you're putting um, yep, Hiromu put, and Shibata. Yep, separate. Yeah, I'll put them. I'll put those two on a separate show, probably the fourth. Liger, finals, fifth, and then we're filling out the rest. Right. You heard it here first. Uh, main event for this show in Kagoshima, we have IWGP Heavyweight Championship right to challenge contract match. Kota Ibushi versus Kenta. Are you expecting a better match than the match they had in Dallas? I thought the Dallas match was good. I didn't have... I mean, live, I thought it was fine. I mean, it was a little bit... <clears throat> uh, a little bit wonky at, at points. But, I mean, considering it was Kenta's first match, I really didn't have much to complain about. Even though, well, you know, now I'm sitting here nitpicking it a little bit. It was heavy on the Kenta offense, it felt like. Uh, and a very yeah, bad be better. go to sleep to finish. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. There's a lot to pick apart in that. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I like the match, to be fair, but I, that did stick in my mind where he did it on Ibushi's arms. I'm not saying that's mm-hmm. his fault per se, but it sticks in the mind. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. And I, I think there's room for improvement. And I think we, we will see it. Um, but I, with that being said, I don't think that we uh, the contract remains with Coda, um, which again we talked about it before. Kind of weird to put Kenta in that spot to take a pinfall, but um, yeah, I mean I don't know how else you get. But around then they've the got issue. they would then have time to heat them up between now and January fourth. Right. Well, I mean presumably Evil is going to challenge for the briefcase at King of Pro Wrestling. Whereas if you did it the other way around, then it's like you're building up Kenta and then he loses and then you, you don't have as much time to build him up before the dome. Do you see what right. I mean? Yeah, you do have a little little ways to distance yourself from that loss. So, um, yeah, I, I think I think that's a safe play. Any shenanigans here? Do you think uh, we get like some sort of Shibata interference or is it just clean Ibushi wins? <sighs> I mean, it, I, I do think we'll see nonsense. I do. I mean, it just kind of, how do you not? Um, yeah, because it's not like the biggest show, is it? No. Kagoshima, I don't know I don't know what the capacity is, but I think 
we do expect clean finishes in big New Japan matches, and that's one of the things we love about the company, but wouldn't be shocked to see some shenanigans here. Right, and and if it were to happen, this is probably the safest place you can do it, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, gun to my head, I, I would say that there would be some type of, of, of bullshit nonsense, something going on. Look, it's just not going to be a clean one, two, three, and and we go to the back and go to the do do our interviews. I think there's going to be a little bit more going on to help further the story of Kenta being a fucking prick, Coda defending, you know, keep keeping that briefcase, um, but storyline progressions moving forward. All right, so that's our preview of the two destruction shows. We will be doing our next Super J Cast next Tuesday. So that will be after those two destruction shows. And let's dig into some questions then. Uh, right. Discord first. I have a question from Nicole about Sonata, but I'm going to save that until we preview King of Pro Wrestling. Uh, Tyler, my hero who sent me Buffalo Wild Wing stuff. He says, finally able to watch Royal Quest. I found it odd that Red Shoes was the referee for the British Heavyweight Championship match when New Japan has made it a point to fly in a referee from Rev Pro for their championship matches. Why was Red Shoes refereeing the match in Britain when a Rev Pro referee would have been very easy to get? Roberts. Did, did, we didn't see Roberts once on that show, did we? Um, I don't know, actually. No, I, we did not. Uh, I wonder why. Well, look, I, I had people like, Texting me. Maybe Josh Bodon battered him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Don't do anymore. laughs> Ooh. Um I, our our good friend uh as we like to call him, London Joel, was in the house. And he was uh making mention that he thought it was weird and odd. Um about, you know, why did they why did they fly I mean and I I like Gino. I think Gino does a fine job, but I mean, you're flying in Gino to do color commentating all the way from Australia, right? And and lo and behold, you know, technical difficulties prevented him from be, being even heard for four matches. Uh, like I like that's one of those things that had just had me scratching my head and him as well. Like, why wouldn't you just use uh, Simmons from from Rev Pro they, that that they've flown in to do corking shows? Um, he's right there. Well, I mean, just use him. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it. I don't know why we didn't see uh, Roberts uh, doing rough duties and uh, didn't see him for the whole show. I would suggest maybe that they wanted to have red shoes there, so people thought they were getting the authentic New Japan experience. But yeah, you would have thought you could have. Is it? What's his first name? Is it Andy Roberts? No. Uh, what's his Roberts name? Rev Pro Referee. Yeah, come, on, come on. There you go. Google. Chris Roberts. Sorry. Chris, Chris Roberts. Not Andy Roberts. I like Chris Roberts. Um, I, I'm a big. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the Chris Roberts. I think he's a. He reminds me again. The easy analogy is uh, uh, Tommy Young, an old Tommy Young, a British Tommy Young. He reminds me. All right. Um, Andy says, with Royal Quest in the bag and a clear audience for New Japan in London, what do you think the chances are that we get a G1 block night there next year? How about a G1 opening night in London? Same same venue, Copper Box. I, I think that would be wonderful. I, I really do think that they're going to explore other avenues. I know that they talk a lot about the you know the autumn. I almost said fall. Uh and and you know that looks like that's going to be happening. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if if London is a stop on the G one tour. Maybe a G, maybe one in one in uh, the United States, one in one in uh, London. I don't think that would hurt. It'd be nice, it'd be fun. Maybe different blocks, possibly. Who knows? We'll see. But yeah, I look. Everybody, everybody was very happy with everything when it came to the Copper Box show. Everybody was thrilled. So uh, minus the fight TV bullshit. Uh, I think it was a, a success, and I think that they are absolutely interested in doing something big there again in uh, the coming year. Jeremy says, uh, it's a question for you, Damon. How would you feel about New Japan reaching out to ESPN? It appears as if WWE is going to be all in with Fox, so that leaves ESPN open. Even if it means shows being broadcast on ESPN2 or news, I think it will be advantageous. Formula One switched from NBC to ESPN last year, and they're far more popular in the US than they have been in years. Um, 
Look, I'm I'm happy for I, that. Would be an ideal situation for New Japan, without question. Um, my my problem would be, and it's not really my problem, but my my the hurdle that would need to be overcome would be. Would ESPN be interested in something like that? Now, again, back in the day, they would air AWA, and those shows were nonsense, and they would air old world-class championship wrestling. Um, And they have dipped their toes into other pro wrestling at various times. Keep in mind, ESPN is kind of, sort of, somewhat in the past and in, in bed with WWE. So I think that if they said, hey, we're thinking about picking up this New Japan Pro Wrestling thing, you mean to tell me that they're not going to get a call? Be like, ah, well, that means you're not going to get Becky Two Belts, and you're not going to get Brock, and you're not going to get blah, 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 and all that shit. And they would just be like, okay, well, that, that ends that. I don't think that there's anyone at ESPN that is passionate enough about pro wrestling that they would say, but I would rather have New Japan Pro Wrestling here than having a random Charlotte interview, right? Trust me, I don't think that's the case. Um, now, if you want to, if ESPN wants to hire me, <laughs> I'll make that decision right now. We'll do it. But I don't. I just don't think that there's anyone in ESPN that is in a in a prominent position that would be like, oh, New Japan Pro Wrestling in a time spot that that could that could do good for us. I just don't see anybody in that company making that move. Jeremy also asked, Joel, if the opportunity comes up, would you consider moving home to Japan and be the next Chris Charlton? Uh, I don't know if Jeremy means like work for New Japan, unless they're going to pay me as much as I get paid here, which I highly doubt, to be honest, then the answer is going to be no. Would I ever move to Japan to to, to still be an international school teacher? Yes, I would. I think about it. I've got things pretty sweet here at the moment, but... Um, would I move to Japan and then just spend all of my money on <laughs> going to New Japan? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who knows? Watch this space. We'll see. But, I don't uh, know. I'm pretty happy with where I'm at the moment. Yeah, like as much as like, I, I mean, I got like another five years to go on this house, right? Or a thirty-year mortgage, which is pretty amazing to me. That I'm pretty soon to paying it off. And trust me, there have been conversations about this. Like, what would it be like? Because um, I mean, we'll watch people who live in Japan, you know, in their da- in their daily lives and blah blah blah. I I don't know. I don't know if it would be too much culture shock. Again, being a twenty year old and packing up and going, and 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 doing that is a little bit different than than a forty something year old. I think. Um, and I don't know if that type of shock to our everyday lives would be a positive. I don't know. Look, I love going there. It's my favorite city in the world. Uh, it, it, we dream about it every night. Um, but with that being said, there is a huge difference between, ah, I'm going here for a week and I'm going home, and then as opposed to, ah, I live here now. This is, this is my home. And I think there's a lot of barriers that, that I would need to overcome before I, I would be comfortable making that happen, if that makes any sense. Yeah, definitely. I think I've said before, I like the idea of just having it as a little holiday. And I worried that if I did move there, I might fall out of love with it. But um, right. it's not always something to think about. I never rule it out. Uh, Graphic Ben says, since it's a quiet week, if New Japan and Bushiro produce collectible cards with iconic versions of wrestlers, E.g. Tranquilo Naito, Long Boys Okada, what card would you include in the set? Uh, would Kishin Liger, would that count as one of them? Yeah, I would think so, right? Yeah, that's that's always a popular um, thing in New Japan Pro Wrestling history. We talk about that, so yeah, that, that would probably be a strong one. Um, Sex Pig Osprey. <laughs> that, 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 would be a, that would be a hot seller, I'm sure. Sex Pig. Um Every time I hear that, I always think you're not going to know the reference. Well, maybe you will. I'll throw it out there anyway. But there's a song by a band called Soft Cell. Uh, back in the 80s, they did a song called Tainted Love. They did a cover. You know the song Tainted Love? Yeah, of course. I know Tainted Love, yeah. All right. Well, they also do a song called Sex Dwarf. Um, and it's awful. <laughs> but that just reminds me. Every time you hear Sex Pig, I think it's Sex Dwarf. 
Um, so Osprey is a sex pig and Robbie Eagles is a sex dwarf. Is that what you're trying to say? Would, that's what I'm trying to get to, Joel. That's the, in a roundabout way. Yeah, sex dwarf is Robbie Eagles. Um, cards, yeah. I would I would probably start with the, the Liger and, and work from there. I'm actually trying to sell a lot of my stuff. I have a lot of shit. Like, I'm kind of in this mode where I'm kind of like, I have this shit. It's sitting in my office and it just sits there. You know what I mean? Like, do I need this? Do I need this banner, New Japan Pro Wrestling? Do I need – I have a poster that's sitting in a tube, and it's been sitting in there forever, and, I just, and it's autographed by almost everyone that participated in um, G1 Climax 25. Um, and it's like it has all these autographs, and it's just sitting in a tube. And it's just like, well, do I need this? Should I sell this? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of a lot of stuff, so eh, we'll see. Oh, my God, the hot girl across the street. She's oh my god, Joel, Whew. yikes, Almighty! Man, I mean she can't she she fumbles that baby right? You know she 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 can't carry a baby, but man, she looks great. She looks great doing it. She looks great dropping her baby. She's getting ready for work and then oh my lord! All right, I'm, I feel like a creeper. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, uh, Michael says if and when do you think we see Oka and Kawato back from excursion and what faction slash place on the card would you like to see them return at? Uh, Kawato, I think Lij would yeah, make sense for him. Up. Yeah, and uh, Oka. I don't know about Oka. I don't know where it would be a good spot for him. It depends what kind of gimmick he's running with. Yeah. Faction talk. Factions. Oh, factions. Um, yeah, Lij. I think it would be a safe pick, just because of the, that interaction they had before, um, with you know Naito kind of treating him a little bit special. When he was a young young boy, uh yeah, that, that sounds good to me. Chaos. Let's say put chaos, Oka in chaos Suzuki for everybody Goon. else. Suzuki Gun, yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, he could be a bad guy. Uh, Doctor Poodle Papa says thoughts on El Fantasma using the Titty Twister as a heel offensive maneuver. Are these shoots purple nurples? Yeah. Are you familiar with the purple yeah. nurple, Joel? No. What's that? I mean, it's just the the end result of a Titty Twister. Grabbing the nip, you twist in it, and you're going to get a bruise. You're going to get the purple nurple. No? Not a, not a thing when you I've were growing never, up? I've never had that. <laughs> I can't say I've had the pleasure. No? Well, <laughs> um, you're in luck. I'll uh, Titty twisters for everyone at the Tokyo Dome. Um, no, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a nonsense move. I mean, I'm... Really, that Tootie Twister, like uh, the content that we give you. I wake up, I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, right? We, we do a show, and we dance around these these road two shows, right? We give you quality. Con- we could have sat here and said, "Okay, what did you think of match number three? You know, but we didn't. We got creative. We got new, we had different spins, different takes on the pro wrestling world, and I get to a Titty Twister. Question. All right, so Dr. Poodle Puppet, you are banned from asking any more questions. No! You're on the blacklist. Oh, my goodness. All right. How no, dare you? All right, uh, <laughs> Jeff says you can lock anyone in New Japan up for a lifetime contract. Who is it and why is it Tai Chi? If both hosts could give their own, that would be cool. If only one answers, that's also fine. So if you could lock anyone down, Damon, lifetime contract, who's it going to be? Mm. You know, Coda is not... This 20-year-old spring chicken, mind you. I mean, he already has this lifetime contract, apparently. Um, who would I lock down? Who do I think is, honestly, not? I don't know if he has it or doesn't have it right now. I think Okada you would lock down, right? Like, to me, Okada is the one guy, besides Naito, um, where it would be super hurtful to new japan like if like if it were announced after the tokyo dome okada's going to, to aew or going to wwe i i honestly think that would be a massive blow to new japan pro wrestling don't you yes but i don't think he would he doesn't seem like the type it it he doesn't but stranger things have happened right to me, he would be priority number one. Now, if the question is about younger people and, and future stars, who would I lock down? Who would I absolutely have to lock down? 
Osprey. Uh, that that's the name that keeps popping up. I don't because he's one that I think there would be a danger of him going to WWE at some point. How impactful would it be to New Japan's business if Will Osprey left? Uh, it depends how heavily they push him, doesn't it? I mean, if he becomes Does. a big fixture in the heavyweight title picture scene, then I we, mean, we're talking a, a big player, aren't we? Yeah, but I, again, I think this company can survive if if Will left. I, th- I, th- I think he could. They they could. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, but yet his name keeps popping up in my head of a guy that you would want to pin down and lock it down. Um, to me, Okada is just the one that just screams that you can you can under no circumstances could that guy leave and 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 New Japan be the same. That's yeah, I agree. With that, that. That's the one guy. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this question. Just give me your gut reaction, just honest response to this question. Not necessarily answering the question, just what your feelings are okay. after I've read this one to you. So this is by Mixelplex. He says something light hearted. Um, perhaps to kick things off if the world is feeling a bit too grim and gritty on any particular week. Daryl Takahashi Jr. is perhaps the greatest plush prospect in wrestling history. If you were booking DTJ's excursion, where would you send him? In the States, we have a thing called Build-A-Bear where he might learn a thing or two about American life. Any ideas? Where am I sending Daryl on an excursion is is the question? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, You know, I'm going to say something. I don't even think is, he's... Is this person going on the never, <laughs> never ask the question to... again list? I, I will say this. I don't even think Daryl's the best plush toy that's ever been made in pro wrestling. I think people seem to be forgetting about George the Animal Steel's mine. Remember mine? Mine! Remember that plush little thing? Joel? No? No. Are, are you Enlighten telling us. me you... Uh, Google that fucking thing right now. George the Animal Steel, mine. I I would say that's better than Daryl. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? I would go mine over mine. I'm doing my George Steele. Wow, uh, what is it? I'm right. It looks like exactly. A... <laughs> it's like... That's much better than Daryl Takahashi. Right. Am I wrong? You motherfuckers. You are not. What is you it? Mother... I... That's the question. That's the question. Right. <laughs> Leaves a little, a little mystery, a little fucking intrigue. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So these kids coming up up the street with this fucking Daryl stuff, thinking Daryl's the be all to end all. Let me introduce you to mine, huh? Change the world, change the world, mine. All right. Ah, uh, so there oh, you I've go. I've learned something today. Uh, Xavier says, "What would Damon think if New Japan brought in someone like China?" Same height and strength as the men into next year's G1. They already did. Uh, who is your favorite Joshi wrestler? I mean, they, she, she was already there. She was already, I mean, she wasn't in G1, mind you, but she was like, you know, fighting Chono and going toe to toe with Masahiro Chono at the Tokyo Dome. Um, and in 2019, New Japan? Well, I mean, kind of hard to do when she, you know, no longer here. But. That'd be terrible. Someone <laughs> like China. Oh, like China. <laughs> Does it bring China? It'd be impossible. Very poor taste. Um, um. Okay, let's say I'm. I'm, I'm really weighing the, in... the, the pluses and minuses, right? I'm, we- I'm weighing the pluses and minuses here. Can, can, okay, can we separate it from? the inevitable, like, right. horrible discussions that would follow. Right. But let's say, let me just throw one out there. Let's say you bring in Mako Satomura just for a one-off match with, let's say, Ishii. Okay. Um, as long as... And I, don't, I'm, and I wouldn't be concerned because you see that all the time. I can't say all the time. But you, you've, there are more bodies of work where there's mixed tags... Um, in 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 Japanese pro wrestling, and they do it well, right? I mean, watch watch some of those Suzuki matches. 
you know, with uh, uh, Kana, right? Now known as Asuka. Where Suzuki is just taking it off and, and, and treating it like Suzuki would, you know? Like, if Suzuki were going to be in a match, he's going to treat everybody the same, and he's going to beat the shit out of you if, if, if you're in the ring with him. Um, and, they would, and they would probably treat it as such, right? I don't think that they would dance around it. Like, Ishii would be Ishii. So the expectation would be to have an Ishii match. I'm going to be honest with you. I got no problem with it. I got, I got no problem with it. I really don't. Now, the idea of G1 being um, best of the best, um, absolutely. And I'm sure that they could work the, 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 the buildup for that to say, hey, you know what? If, if, if this is you know, best of the best, someone could, could run into a press conference and be like, well, I, you know, I'm the best at what I do. I want in if, if what you're saying is true. Um, I mean, it can be done. I, I, listen, I trust them to do it. If this were going to be done, I trust them to do it more than just about anybody else to treat it like to treat it well and to treat it with with you know a a, a level of seriousness. And again, I say that in pro wrestling. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that I want it done, but if it were to be done, um, they would do it well. I really do. I really truly believe that they would be able to do it well. Um, so yeah. I mean, I got no problem with it. Do you have a favorite, Joshi? Hmm. Promotion or wrestler? Wrestler. I like right. Hannah Kimura just because she's really attractive and a great wrestler as well. So both boxes tick. checks boxes. Yeah. Um, I I, I got to be truthful. I'm I'm really terrible when it comes to modern. Um. I probably know. Damon more. hates women's wrestling. Everyone. Uh, no, I don't. Like, <laughs> but like, if somebody says go out of your way to watch this match, I'll watch it. But to sit here and tell you that I'm a fan of it, I I, I would struggle. I, I'm, uh, you know, just just names and faces and shit like that. And I probably know more older ones than I do know current. That's that's an honest to god shortcoming in my pro wrestling game, no doubt about it. Um, all time. Manami Toyota is pretty great, right? I mean, of course, everybody's going to point to Aja Kong. Everyone's going to point to uh, Chikusa Nagayo. Um, yeah. I, pro- I, I probably know more mainstream, top of the card, 90s, classic, all Japan women than I do know a lot of the current. Sorry. All right, let's go on to the next question, which is from Aspir. I can't remember if I asked you this one already. Did I ask you about the Lucha in Philly question? No, no. I mean, I think so he texted it, it to me. Okay, well, he says, uh, itching to see some Lucha in Philly, Damon, and sends a link for a show with uh, he heard Del Santo and Vampira in the old ECW arena on the 13th of October. Um, How much I... would you have to be paid to go to that? Or well, maybe I have a ticket already, Joel. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I wouldn't have to be paid much. I mean, honestly, if if I'm not doing anything on the 13th, I I would have no problem rolling up there. I mean, again, I'm not far away, so um, I don't think I would hate it. I think it'd be fun. Knock down a couple beers. I uh, wouldn't have a problem with that. Yeah. Um, but... I will say this. I think I have a hockey game that night. I think that's really what I think I have a scheduling conflict. So I don't know if I will, will be there, but if I'm, if I'm open, I would I, listen. And I saw that it was there. Eh, I wouldn't have a problem swinging by. South Dakota Ibushi says, if Farley goes to wear the Dodo in next year's G1, who replaces him as the quote unquote off night Tai Chi or chase Owens with pure shenanigans, Colt Cabana or Taguchi with comedy or someone else. I mean, I know they really like Chase, and I think Chase is probably your 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 option, right? I, I would say I would say the Chase option. 
Uh, Vase Collector 420 says, would you rather eat Nando's or Yano's curry for dinner? I never had the Yano's. But everybody says it's pretty good. Everybody says it's surprisingly good. Like we need to get like, some in January, don't we? I'll, I'll fucking pick some up. Damn right I will. Um, and then we'll do a taste test on the podcast. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Uh, but Nando's is really fucking good, right? Mm. I, I I miss that taste. I would say Nando's. Yeah, me too. And I'm not like the hugest Nando's fan, but it must have been about five years since I last had one. And yep. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm going to dip into Twitter a bit. Uh, oh, good friend, Smartcast co-host Alan says, when ah. we get the follow-up to Royal Quest, which is bound to happen given the show's success, will Damon be crossing the pond to hang with the Smartcast lads and go to the show? And editor Dan chips in and says, my house is his house if the answer is yes. Oh, all right. I like that. I remember he offered that before. Um, just a, hey, look, I would I would go just a matter of, of money. matter of money. I, I will say this, though. I will be at, uh, I'll be in Lowell. Massachusetts at the end of uh, this month, uh, and Philly. Um, maybe I'll, I'll make some announcements of uh, a Philly building that we're looking at. Maybe we'll talk about that at the end of this show, right? How about that? Remind me, and I'll uh, we'll uh, talk about where I'm thinking about having a little meetup. So uh, uh, again, it's just a matter of paying for it. And if I had the money, I'll be there. That's that's the that's that's the end of that one. Uh, Wrestling History X says, why should I care about Hiroki Goto? Won 2008 G1, made it to the finals in 2016, lost all eight of his IWGP heavyweight chances. Give me something. I think you're uh, talking to the wrong people uh, here. Mate. <laughs> right, right. I think, the, I think so. Uh, let's, let's talk positive about Hiroki Goto. I would say you have a Big better... Big dad than, energy. Good dad, dad energy. energy. Here's someone that I want to emulate in the future. Yep. When I'm a father, I'm, I'm looking at him. I want to be like Goto. Okay, positive. Uh, here's a, po- another positive. You, you've got a better than 50% chance of a match being really good. I, f- I feel that. I, f- I, f- I feel that. Now, it depends upon the partner, but you do have that. Um, but as a fan, that's the biggest challenge that we have, right? Like, like you, it's hard to, to hang your hat on Goto being nothing more than a guy who's you know, it's been called gatekeeper to the stars. We've called it Chief J Goto. You know, whatever you want to call it, it's it's that's his role of being the baby face that will, you know, help elevate a heel. Um, he's always going to be a guy that you could stick in and heat up to to challenge for a title. Never intercontinental, and even in some wacky cases, every once in a while, at this point, you could still. Find a way to squeeze him into a, a to challenge for the the big boy belt. Um, do we think he's IWGP heavyweight championship material? I don't think anybody does. Could he win the Intercontinental? I think that is a road that is quickly closing. Um, but any of those secondary tag title, all that, pfft. he's a good gatekeeper to the stars. He's got a name in this company. He's got a history in this company. I just don't think it's somebody that you're going to you know, look to the future for. Chris says, why wasn't Gabriel Kidd in the Young Line Cup? I'm outraged personally. Uh, I believe it's because he just signed with NXT UK. No, seriously. Uh, maybe we'll see him next year, I'm sure. And we'll see some other very successful recruits to the UK dojo. Uh, Paul says, when Okada finally drops the belt, how long would you keep him away from it? Personally bored of this title run, knowing he's facing guys he's not going to lose to. Yeah, I did echo those concerns as well, because a lot of these matches, you know he's not going to lose to Suzuki, you know he's not going to lose to Sanada. So when he drops it, how long do you keep him away from it, Damon? Um, you know, I just sat here and talked about how he's the guy that, that I would not let get away. But yeah, there is, there would be, it would be nice to kind of have him cool off a little bit and, and do other things, maybe Intercontinental. He'll always be in the mix. And again, maybe this is, you know, when we talk about Naito getting a little, getting a little run with this title, might be a perfect opportunity to kind of change it up a little bit and have him do other things as opposed to constantly being in that heavyweight title mix. So uh, you might get that wish sooner than later come January. Yeah, so last time after his massive reign, he dropped it in June and then won it back the following April. So it was less than 
less right. than a year. So I think you want to go longer than that. You want at least a year away from it. Oh, I think LIJ people are, are, are agreeing with that statement 100%. Okay, uh, Louis says, what young lion over the years does Damon think has had the most success in New Japan, even during their excursions? Um, of all time? I mean, yeah. tig Tiger Mask, maybe? Um, even when Tiger Mask was over here in the early 80s, uh, I mean, it's not like he was main eventing, but he he was pushed as a guy, and push, I use the term lightly, as a guy who was like an international star who fucking, you know, has this junior title and he's an international sensation and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, when Akira Maeda was over here in the WWF, when he did that, uh, he hated it. I mean, he's losing. Speaking of George the Animal Steel, fucking Akira Maeda loses to George the Animal Steel. What on, on, on Earth 2 this happens? Um uh, blow Ricky Chochu when he was over here. I mean, he was it was he was just here. Um, and I and that and I don't even think that was really like that big of a of an excursion. When he was in Mexico, he had probably had. But he, when he did like little spot shows like Madison Square Garden and Spectrum in Philly, he was just bottom of the card. It wasn't anything big deal. Um, I mean, Liger is not bad. You know, considering Calgary, considering England, I mean, he wasn't top of the card guys, but he was in the mix with with top of the card guys. Uh, and then coming back, getting a Liger gimmick, and away we go. Liger might be in the, like, might be high on that list. Uh, Muda might be on that list. Muda might be on that list. The time he spent in Florida as the ninja. And of course, doing uh, this little run with WCW uh, that captivated the pro wrestling world, and then going back and just being catching fire uh, with New Japan. So that might be on the list. Uh, I mean, that's a good start, wouldn't you think? That's a good start. Yeah, very thorough, very comprehensive. I can <laughs> got very little to draw from when you're talking about Young Lions. Um, speaking with the Young Lions, Samuel says, for all Suji did for Tanahashi during the G1, surely he should return the favour and pound the match during a Suji match. I think yeah. Tanahashi should be there for every single one of Suji's uh, Young Lion Cup matches, supporting him. And if he's not, that is the basis for the feud. So Suji goes away on excursion, comes back, and then just destroys Tanahashi and picks up the microphone afterwards and says, you never reciprocated the support that I gave you during the G1. And there you go. You got your built-in feud. Nice. All right. I like that. Uh, I always wanted to see something along the lines of not to steal something from WWE, but I liked the idea of having certain legendary figures assigned a young lion. So maybe it's not Tanahashi at ringside at every match, but you know, maybe Nagata, maybe Tenzan, maybe Nakanishi. Maybe somebody, but and they're kind of assigned them as a mentor, you know, you know out front and in and in the public. Um, and again, I like the the idea that you know when Moxley kind of did it, um, you kind of felt that. But I always kind of felt like that that would be a fun way to go to have. Again, they're in the mix, they're in the young alliance pool, but they do have that one legendary person that, again, maybe not a manager per se, but. You know that one person that's tied to them. Um, that that would be sort of what the, was described there. I always thought that would be an interesting idea for for young lions. Yeah, they kind of have that the senpai kohai thing. Am I? I don't know if mm -hmm. I've got that correct, but uh, I would like I'd like it to be more pronounced. Yes. Um, all right. Eric says, was the New Japan at Mania weekend a one time thing due to a perfect storm of drivers, MSG, ROH, NYC? Or do you still expect the possibility of a New Japan show in Tampa? Um, part one of the question, I don't think that there's any denying the fact that it was a nice, perfect storm um, where people, again, when tickets went on sale, people did, and we talked about it on this show, that people had the expectations of Omega, Bucks, Cody, all that being involved and. And we warned them <laughs> the contracts were... They got Enzo were, and Cass. What, what you want? <laughs> good point. That's a very good point. Uh, again, still a successful show. Still a great show. Sold out. Wonderful. All that. 
Uh, WrestleMania being there again, it kind of we talked about with the Noah stuff. It's it takes advantage of people already being there in a pro wrestling frame of mind, ready to rock and roll with some, with uh, seeing some live shows. Then why not, right? Um, it's a lot of those things. Uh, could could New Japan in the middle of I don't know November book Madison Square Garden and sell it out now? I would say it'd be very difficult if I'm being 100% truthful. Now, again, Madison Square Garden would draw from New York. It would draw from Philadelphia. It would draw from every Delaware, but all, all around the area. It's an, e- it's an easily gotten to arena, right? For, it's, you can get there by train, direct shots, boom. It's, it's not unheard of. So it would draw from a very large audience pool, potential audience pool. I just don't know if they could sell out Madison Square Garden right now. They could get close. They but could get a, a good gate. But I don't think they What about pick, piggybacking off of future WrestleManias? So, like, next yeah, WrestleMania Tampa. is in Tampa. Do you think uh, that's going to be a regular thing? Yeah. I mean, why not? Right? I, I, I So, uh, to answer the question... I, I I think I think it's something that they're strongly considering. I would say yeah, I, I, and why and why wouldn't you? Right? Why wouldn't you? Jim says, Joel, are you playing any phone games? I finally started Fake Grand Order and I'm hooked. I don't really like phone games. I I did go through a phase of playing a lot of Candy Crush, and I'm kind of ashamed of that because I feel those sorts of games are making society worse. I feel like it's making what? the world really? the worst place. That's yeah. not gun control. Not gun control. Phone games are making it. Uh, I'm not saying that it's worse than gun control, but it's okay. certainly not helping. Okay. I, again, I'm still playing Chrono Trigger, and I love it. And I just think that is... Uh, there's just a, a whole well of just brilliant old games that are untapped and that I would love to see kids these days playing instead of... Just the utter shit that seems to be popular these days. But there you go. It's just me I got utter shit on my phone. Commotion. I got utter uh, utter shit games on my phone. I think. I, I think you would categorize them as shit games. I have. I'm looking at my phone right now. I have Plants vs Zombies. I have that. I like that. Uh, True Skate, where you you kind of like Tony Hawk skater. You're just skating around cities. Uh, Stratego, the old classic board game, one of my favorites. Um, do I have any other games? Oh, I do have a game called Limbo. It's like this creepy little guy. You got to get him through a maze and shit. I probably played it once. That's it. That's all I got for games. I don't really play a lot of games. Um, that's it. Oh, game Games-wise on my phone. Those are the games I have on my phone right now. Uh, Gui, I've been pronouncing that correctly, G-U-I. Uh, yesterday, I had a dream that Brock Lesnar went to All Japan, lost to Kento, Meltzer gave it four stars, and people shat on him. My question is, has wrestling Twitter done my brain in? Also, any other rumblings on that Cain Velasquez to New Japan? No, but nothing wrong, Cain Velasquez. Um, <laughs> yes, I think you need to log off. This yeah. certainly happened to me, where you just find yourself thinking things and worrying about stuff like, oh, I hope strangers on Twitter don't criticize my opinion about this wrestler or this wrestling match. And I think, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> what no. is going on? It's it isn't it amazing how how that is. Yep. Um, that, and again, that's part of the reason why I just can't do it. I'll hop in and out. I can't tell you how many times I delete Twitter off my phone. Like every t- how about this? Every time I post something on our account, and it's rare. Every time that I do that, I re- instantly regret it, and I instantly delete my access to the to the account. Every time, every fucking time. That's how much I just it just drives me nuts, and I don't know why I do it. David says, any update on New Japan's relationship with ROH? The two seem to no longer be working with each other at this point, while ROH is now partnering more with CMLL. It doesn't seem New Japan needs or wants a partnership in the US anymore. Also feels like New Japan always preferred RevPro to ROH. Again, we talk about this a lot. It does feel like they are like quietly moving their things out of ROH's apartment without necessarily saying, that's it, it's over. 
you know, they've moved some of their stuff out. The toothbrush isn't there anymore. They've moved their clothes out and they're just sort of gradually tampons. easing themselves out of that relationship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're no longer, no more tampons. Uh, Harold's mailing glitter bombs, I believe, is what, uh, is what I th- I'm thinking. <laughs> that's a, that's a little practical joke. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think you nailed it right there. You're very eloquent today. You, you really uh, are hitting the mark today, Joel. Oh, thanks. Um, I, I was worried about this show. I was like, we've got nothing to we talk know. about, but okay. I've, yeah, I feel we always, we've... We always pull it out of the bag, don't we? We do. We're professionals. We're fun. We're entertaining. We do a show. Um, all right, let's just do a few more. Anders says, New Japan drew about 5,000 people to Dallas. I believe they sold out the copper box. Do you see their overseas expansion continuing to be as successful? Yeah, you do wonder, as it continues, are those numbers going to dwindle as the novelty wears off, or is the brand name, the value of the brand name, the brand recognition going to stay strong to be able to sustain those kind of numbers? We just, we don't know. Uh, I mean, that's the biggest concern when we talk about the this expansion thing, is, the, is, is, this, their, is this their mark? And, and okay, if it is, then how do, you, how do you grow that audience, right? And I think one is a better TV deal. Um, in 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 finding ways to promote your brand, in I hate to say this, in a little bit more of a Western way, um, you need TV here. You need a a, a presence um, with a, with a with a TV show to make any any strong movement. If you want to break out of that five thousand range, you're going to have to do that because there's there there is a base of pro wrestling fans that shock. Look, when I go to New Japan shows, I find it amazing that we don't have 10, you know, 20,000 downloads a week. You know what I mean? Like, I find it amazing. because It's like, well, well how can you not? But uh, I, I, the same can be said of a New Japan pro wrestling fan going to, I don't know, another show or another thing where it's like, well, how do you not know about New Japan? You know, it's great. It's just people want convenience here more than anything else. I mean, that's that's the American way. We want convenience for, for every aspect of our lives. We just want to push the TV on and have it magically fucking appear. Um, and you can't do that without having some type of TV deal. Lee says, is the Never title truly the most exciting title in New Japan with guys like Ishii, Kenta, Goto, Shingo, Osprey, and Taichi in it, and also Suzuki Shibata? Archer, Evil, Sonata, Cobb, and Gresham, who could slash should be at it. Um, I like the Never title. I know some people shit on it, but I think it gives you... Well, first, I like the kind of style of the matches, and I think it's provided some fresh, interesting stuff. We've had a lot of fun with the Taichi Cartwheel Death matches. That spice things up a bit over the last year or so. So I'm a fan. Yeah. I mean, and, and the potential of all the people that are in the mix... For that never, it kind of feels like for the first time in a long, long time that it's just not that this, the, the, it's not the beefy guy title, right? It's not just two hard hitting bulls. It's a nice mix of different people and different styles, kind of what everybody wanted that never title to be. It's finally come to pass. Um, so, yeah, the potential is there for greatness when it comes to the never. It's, it, to me, it's, you know, it, pff, I feel like it's. I'm. I'm more excited about the Never Title than I am about the Intercontinental Title. Um, I just, just the potential matchups just sound really sexy to me. Piggybacking off the earlier Goto discussion, Michael says, "What's more unlikely, another Tanahashi Heavyweight Title run or a Goto Title run?" I would say Goto Title run. Give me odds, or give me out of ten chances on Tanahashi getting another title reign. I think it's low. I would say at a scale one to ten, four. But I mean, he is—he's a guy that, in a pinch, if you needed to do it, it would make you—you you could easily do it, and, and it would make perfect sense. You know, what I mean, it, it wouldn't be a stretch. Yeah, he's like the reset button, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's exactly what he is. Yeah, at this point, sure, absolutely. Um, no, I mean, look. I don't think anybody's jonesing for it. Nobody's going to be like, come on, one more run. But uh, in, in a pinch, yeah, I mean, you, you absolutely could do that. Violet Skipping says, could the infrastructure issues, that means the Super J Cup will be take delay, be a sign 
of either A, ROH is no longer as forthcoming in their production support, or B, New Japan are actively no longer seeking ROH's help with a view to unwinding the relationship. Also, is it a bit weird that the New Japan world higher-up seem nonplussed about airing the Super J Cup live when they took such a keen interest in the presentation of their third commentator slash translator? Has there been any internal response to the negative reaction slash demand that's being missed? Mm. Well, I mean, somebody's reading the tea leaves. Uh, right? Um I would think people that that finally paying attention to us, Damon. Yeah, people people finally connecting some dots. Uh, so yeah, maybe you see a little bit more of that infrastructure that you're talking about when it comes to uh, changes of uh, people making that decision. Right? Maybe, maybe. Eric says, apropos of nothing, who's your favorite still performing wrestler you've never seen live? Oh, wow. That's, a That's an question. interesting one. Still performing. They have to still be performing. Yeah. <sighs> to what degree? So it Full time? It's the question. Because can they just do like one shots? Um, yeah. I mean, Kawada is probably so high on that list. Um, that's one guy I've never seen. You know, I've never seen Ricky Choshu. Really? No. Never. Live, no. Uh, <sighs> Kawada. Ricky Choshu. You just retired for the 700th time. Um, is there anybody else, Joel, that I would need to say that I have never witnessed with my own two beautiful blue eyes. Wolf-like. Wolf-like eyes, dare I say. Sexiest part about me, those eyes. I can <laughs> swoon them. You're not stalling, are you? <laughs> I am. Uh, no, I mean, I, I saw Hanson live. I've seen, and he's not wrestling anymore. Um, no, I, I, I'd, I'd probably leave it at two, yeah. I don't know. I'm really struggling with that. I don't know if I have a favorite wrestler. I guess it would have to be someone outside of New Japan because I think I've pretty much seen everyone, all the top boys in New Japan, haven't I? Yeah. Um, other promotions. I mean, I've seen All Japan, you know, many times in my travels. Big Japan, so I've seen everybody there. Um, I'm trying to think of like legendary guys that, that they'll just trot out every once in a while. Um, I've seen Tatsumi Fujinami wrestle. I've seen Muda wrestle. I've seen, um, I'm trying to think of guys again, that still are somewhat active. Like I can't say Chono, even though I seen Chono live. Um, Andre's yeah. a giant panda. I'd love to see Andre's uh, there you go. panda live. There you go. I think I've, I have seen the panda. Yes. All right, very good. What else? Uh, a couple more before I got to head out. Um, oh, God. <laughs> uh, Steel O'Neill says, when, when are you going to review all of Yano's DVDs? It's the content we deserve. Look, as soon as they start translating them, I'll review them. I would yeah. love to watch them because they look a lot of fun, but until they're in English, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. Um, Nathan says, have Everton got a good deal in getting Iwobi or should I be panicking that I'm going to to just sit at Goodison frustrated all season as I usually do. I really like Alex Wobi and I was sorry that we sold him and I think he is a good player and I think he will improve. I mean, you look at the goal that he scored in the Europa League final. Uh, but he can be a bit frustrating at times, but I think he's a step above, let's say, a Theo Walcott. So I think by the time the season's over, you'll be happy with the purchase of Alex Iwobi. Um Wrestling With My Girl says, does Damon have a public profile on Spotify? More music stuff from Damon in any form, please. No, I sure do. Um, it is Damon McD on Spotify. I have plenty of playlists and uh, and like all the, all the the weird names that I like to come up with for my stupid playlist because I think I'm so creative. Uh, but yes, there's plenty of it, and uh, it, by all means, follow me, um, and you'll get to see all of my wonderful musical tastes which is pretty limited to a certain genre. <laughs> but uh, I do try to mix it up a little bit. So there you go. 
Lorraine Barr says, going to Japan at the end of October. Any advice uh, on scoring Karaka and Hall tickets? Um, yes, there is. Um, I would say that you do not want to wait in line the day of, right? So my suggestion would be at your earliest possible time frame when you land, get go to Cork and Hall and just buy them, you know, as soon as you can um, in advance. Now, barring that, if getting them uh, in advance, um, we used to. I, my, I again, I used to use Go Sumo. Was it Sumo tickets? I used to use them all the time, and they were always great and always hooked me up. But then I now with the shit that happened, um, I don't know if they're too interested in getting the pro wrestling tickets for a random show in November. Maybe you might have better luck. Um, give them a shot. But basically, all you're looking for is somebody over there to buy you a ticket. Um, so if you have any connects, by all means, I would reach out to them. They can go to a convenience store and get them in advance. Um, I'm sure there are other services besides Go Sumo that will get you those tickets. Um, you just got to do a little internet search and look and see. Um, but the best advice I could give you is either go to the New Japan store or go to Cork and you know a couple days before the show. You don't want to wait in line the day of. Get there. Go up to the fifth floor. There's a little – when you go in, there's go to your right, and before you go through the glass doors, there's a little ticket kiosk thing there, a little ticket desk. Make sure you have um, in Japanese what you're looking for. So um, if you have a web page that you take a screenshot of, point at that that date, and then they'll bring out a little pamphlet, a little booklet with all the, the seating chart, and then they'll – You'll, you'll do a lot of pointing and wherever you want the tickets to be, and, and, and away you go. You'll get them. Um, that would be my best piece of advice. All right. You can give us money for no reason, as I said last week. Uh, if you go to redcircle.com forward slash, low, forward slash shows forward slash super dash J dash cast, and there's a red button called sponsor this podcast. So you smash that red button and you give us some of your money. That is it. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. I mean, listen, we 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 got you uh, two and a half hours worth of content here. Uh, talk. I mean, and and again, this is a nonsense road to show that that we didn't talk about, and and we did that to to give you something entertaining. So, uh, yeah, if you can find it in your heart, if you want to hit that button, throw us a couple bucks. By all means, we we certainly would appreciate it. And um, you know, of course, the t-shirts are always there at uh, prowrestlingtees.com slash superjcast. Um, any support you can give us would be wonderful because we don't do live reads <laughs> uh, for whatever reason, but we don't. So um, help us out. Help us out. Make sure you show us your love and appreciation. I'm angry now, David, now that you've mentioned I that. I was just thinking, oh, great show. I'm going to chat to David for two and a half hours, and then you've mentioned the ad reads, and I'm pissed off again. I, again, oh, we don't right. do it for the money, Joe. Remember, if we don't do it, we do it for the we do it for the nookie. Was that, that yeah? That song? Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I hate that song. There you go. Uh, All right, Discord. Uh, hey, yeah, but before you do that. Discord, can, can we can we go do ahead, this? Can we, I, I'm sorry, I, I know you hate when I cut you off, but um, I'm thinking about uh, the night of the Philly New Japan show Super J Cast meetup. Right, there's been a lot of talk about that. So Philadelphia, if you're going to Philadelphia. Here's where I'm looking. It's a place called Toll Man Joe's. Toll Man Joe's. Why there? Well, one, it's big, right? There's plenty of room for everybody. Two, and we, we will be competing with NFL games going on that Sunday. Uh, but luckily, the Eagles are away, right? And it's an afternoon game, so we, we won't be too crazy. But it's big enough, big enough place. Two, we know a couple people that, that work there. And three, it's literally right across the street from Tony Luke's, the sandwich shop, right? Which is... A block away from the arena. So you could walk to everything. You could park at the parking lot in the arena. Whoosh, away you go. You can walk over to Toll Man Joe's and hang out there. So that's where we'll have a little meetup. Again, nothing's official official. It might just be all of us just hanging there and just showing up. But that's where I'm thinking we're going to be. Not thinking. That's where we're going to be for Sunday. Uh, Toll Man Joe's, by all means, join us if you're joining us for the New Japan shows in Philadelphia. Excellent. I'm sorry I can't be a part of that, but uh, if anyone wants to send me some snacks, then it's always appreciated to make up for the disappointment of not being able to be there. 
Uh, so, link to the Discord in the show notes and pinned to our Twitter page. Massive thank you to the man, Editor Dan, YouTube channel 219 Films, Twitter at Escape the Box UK. I don't know if I want to plug the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. I know it's not oh. their fault about the ad scene. <laughs> I'll it's do it anyway. Fault. Please subscribe to the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network and you can listen to other shows that are not <laughs> have not got ad reads but deserve them, <laughs> like uh, Music of the Mat, Wrestling on Makase, anything you know that covers that horrible, dirty Japanese wrestling that doesn't get any revenue. Uh, give us a five snake review on iTunes throw some kind words our way it does help bump up the rankings follow us on Twitter at the Super J thanks everyone for listening and goodbye <laughs>